So welcome all of you, Nana here, and then uh, we are into the next session on this uh, manufacturing collaboration. So let me go there and then I will now start to share my screen and I'll show you what exactly it is. So here. I need one uh, sample one actually. <clears throat> so I'm not going to have one uh, PC assembly shop in Madras. And then uh, I'm not going to manufacture the PC cabinet. And then here, uh, I'm not going to have four operations in this now. Fine, there are the four operations which I'm planning to do it now. And then I will now shift it to an engraver in Bombay. And then he will be engraving the nameplate details of the company. I will and then he will now shift it to the Kalkara spray painter. <clears throat> the spray painter will now perform a spray painting and then he will now send back to Madras. And then there, I will now finally make the 40th operation of what? Stuffing the cabinet with the motherboard and then the RAM actually. So it's a four step process actually. So in fact, what happens as of now, uh, people do the entire operations only as outsourced manufacturing actually. <clears throat> so nothing else is there, fine. Everything is now outsourced. So that way is now operating upon, for example, uh, uh, the Titan. <clears throat> so that industry, fine. When they are manufacturing the uh, what's called the gold jewelry, the entire process is outsourced. They only send it to everybody and then uh, all of them will be doing their part and then they will now send back the finished good and then uh, it will be sent to all the uh, marketing areas basically. So that way it works. And then many, many companies are doing this manufacturing collaboration to a great extent, mainly because uh, the labor unrest is now becoming very, very, very big actually because now labor is now more knowledgeable and then they are demanding so many benefits and so running a company with the labor, <clears throat> whenever a company is labor oriented, it becomes a very, very difficult to maintain and manage actually. So manufacturing collaboration is the ultimate solution uh, which will now solve many of the problems basically. You can outsource every activity and then uh, get the job done by somebody and then uh, you only take care of only sales and marketing. Fine, that way it works upon. So this is how it is going to be now. Fine. So I'm going to have four operations. I'm going to simulate all the four. In this training, it will be approximately more than uh, 90 minutes approximately. And then watch it and then see about how exactly it is going on. So before I go into this now, and a small amount of marketing now. So in fact, what happens, I'm now selling my records basically at my website, oraclenona.com. So the biggest advantage of uh, getting learning from me is what uh, uh, many of the trainers in the market do not have any implementation experience at all. And they without an experience, I have done the implementation of all the three modules. So you'll be getting a basically a good amount of uh, what's called uh, uh, exp uh, exposure and then my practical uh, way of teaching will definitely teach you a lot and you'll now make it make it implementation ready and then you'll not even get the contact details for trainer when you go to the other institutes you'll have to talk via uh, the institute only after sales support is very poor and then the coverage is at a very high level and then you only have to dig deep into this one now whereas but the basics are excellently taught as far as my training is concerned so this is the various advantages which you get once when you buy the records from me because i don't have any sessions actually you only have to buy it now and then I have trained almost 3,000 students the past 15 years. And then I, my name is a synonym in SEM training. And then you'll be finding a lot of useful stuff when you buy and then practice it. You even have the individual module agenda over here. Now, fine. You click on it and have a look at it now. So uh, it's it on a nutshell, actually. Fine. This is a, a 200 hours of training and all these things are there. I'll be giving you 100 hours. And then my students are sharing instances. And then I'm going to share with you also. So you'll be getting instances. I don't know. For the past six months, I'm doing it. I hope that it will be continuing now. Uh, and then you can even register the forum there and then you can even find a lot of useful materials over here now. You can contact me directly on this now. Fine. Uh, and then uh, if you go there and then click on the SCM agenda page, fine. click on the SCM agenda page. In the SCM agenda page, you can now see uh, these are the 11 modules for which you'll be getting the records. They're all mine. You'll be getting both the records and docs. And, all. and then uh, you know, for these eight are basically bought and sold and then you will be getting only records and then no documentation for this. End. And then there's one click here for the agenda for the individual modules. If you click on it, what happens for the all 11 modules, you will now find a 40 page agenda over here. <clears throat> so it's a 40 page. So you can even go through the agenda and then have a look at it. If there is any expectation for you, then it is uh, better that what happens, you go through this and then see whether your expectations are fulfilled before you make a purchase now. So this much of a things are there. And then if you're satisfied with the agenda, what you can do is you can even go there at the top and then you click on the page, the payment gateway actually. So if you click on the pay, it will be going opening up and then you have to fill up your name, email address and phone number and then click on next and then make a payment of 10,000 now. Or otherwise, what you can do is you can even, uh, <coughs> what's called, you go there. You can even, uh, what's called, if you go to the SEM agenda page, <coughs> you can even click on the payment details, you can even register my bank account. In one of the four banks account, you can do it. Now, if you are from abroad, this payment link will not work. It is only for India actually. 
and then uh, if you are in abroad, what you can do is you can be via uh, via next fast remit, or otherwise remitly or instant. So these are three months, and then they will be asking details, and then you can provide these details, and then you can do it now. Fine. So you can contact me at any time on the WhatsApp, and then uh, ask for clarification. So my records will definitely give you a very good foundation, basically. <clears throat> so how do you say? Well, other than that, uh, what's your comment on this now? Fine. Do you have? Uh, how do you feel my sessions actually? Excellent, Nana Ji. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. And especially, I would like to point out the fact that your students are, uh, including me, uh, so involved in the session. That is what is most, uh, and they're coming from diverse backgrounds with, uh, you know, their own uh, specialties, and uh, and that is a that is a very good. Uh, Experience sharing, I should say, more than like yeah, tutorial. Yeah, definitely. Say, you know, people with a different background and then different experience are also from participant or the participants of my training, and so you'll be getting a lot of uh, interaction and then a very good uh, uh, knowledge sharing by others. No, fine. I'll be even attaching you to one of my group, and then the group has got a very good uh, what's called uh, interaction. Actually, you can even now ask for doubts. <coughs> Somebody or other will definitely answer you. <coughs> Thanks, Avin. And then anybody else has got anything to say on my uh, training? Actually. <coughs> Yeah, actually, um, uh, training all the records excellent, uh, very well explained with practical examples. Uh, and uh, in the group, uh, any doubt, uh, like uh, Nana sir himself answers or his other students experienced, they answer. So you are stuck anywhere, even in real project, everyone has a solution. Or even some of his students record uh, videos and uh, Nana sir shares that. Thank so, you. yeah, everyone is sharing knowledge. That is the best thing. Yeah, knowledge sharing is very, very important because I yeah. will not be teaching you everything, but the basics are really very much covered, very well covered in my training, actually. But uh, beyond which, you will be having a perfect platform to launch your uh, R&D, actually. So that much of a thing will be there, actually. So nice. Okay, fine. With this, I stop my marketing, actually. will not come into the subject now. Okay. <laughs> Also, Nana, that uh, group uh, which helps uh, for uh, placement as well. Uh, the, I saw so many placements. We are getting good contacts as well. Many people are even advertising their uh, job opportunities in the market now. So they help even people to what happens. I believe that the job that is another uh, big advantage in the group. Actually. So thanks, Suresh. It's fine for your uh, value addition on this. Okay. Now, that is the point of the subject. Now. Today, we are going to see manufacturing collaboration. So in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an assembly shop in this place. And then here, I'm going to have four operations for performing the PC cabinet, actually. The first operation is what I'm now going to uh, cut the sheet metal and then do the bending. So I'll be having a resource called Bender Welder. So this resource will be basically making the PC cabinet. And then I will be sending it to a Bombay engraver. So this PC cabinet will be shipped to Bom Bombay engraver. So once we ship it, this guy will be engraving the nameplate details of my company on that, on that PC cabinet. And then it will be shipped over to the Calcutta spray painter. So this guy will now do the spray painting. A slurry say, spray painting will not do it. And then he will now finally send back to this place. In fact, what happens nowadays, uh, the entire operation is now outsourced. The company does only what? Monitor about how they are going. That's all the thing else. Apart from that, they do nothing at all. So that way, uh, the one because of uh, so much of a labor problem, many, many manufacturing industries are now switching over to outsourcing actually. So the entire manufacturing is now collaborated by the third parties and then it will be done by them and then he will now only take care of the sales and marketing. Actually. So we're going to see about how exactly it is going to do as a simple process now. Fine. Two suppliers are involved in this now and then it will now come back to this place and then do it now. Fine. So these are the four operations which I'm going to do it now. Fine. I will now do each and everything from scratch now. Fine. It will take more than an hour's time. So just watch uh, uh, what happens keenly and then see if they have any doubts, you can just ask me. <clears throat> so go there. So uh, once when you go there, click on it, come on. So I'll now go to the uh, what's called the one. So it is a basically a 50 step process now. Fine. <clears throat> so we have got 51 steps on this now. So we'll now begin with the first step. Now I have logged in with the PRC05 student. PRC is a basically a procurement. I have logged in now. So I have logged in with the PRC05. Go there, click on it. So <clears throat> I will not log in now. So I logged in. So since he is a procurement user, I need him for inventory also. If you go to the click on the supply chain execution now. So we have inventory management, but we don't have any work execution actually. Fine, the role is missing on this one. Fine, the role is missing. Work execution is down there. Work definition there, work execution is not missing. And then the supply orchestration is also missing. 
So I'm going to add these rows. And then uh, the inventory specific data access is also not there. So I'm going to add the data access for the inventory specific ones now. And then the manufacturing specific ones, I'll now go there and then do it. <coughs> so if you have any doubts, then and there you ask me, otherwise what happens, I'll be missing certain functions, actually I can go there. I will not add the roles now, first of all, I'm going to click on it. So let me add the roles now and take a copy of it and go there. <coughs> Go there. I will now go to the tools and then I go to the security console. <clears throat> I will now go to the security console and then let me add the roles for this PRC05 student. Fine, because basically for a procurement actually. So, procurement, all the roles are available, but uh, not for any other activities. Now, fine. Manufacturing as well as your this thing, I'm going to add it to fine. This is now giving a warning that because the import user role is not run. I'm going to click on it. I'll now go to the user and then query the PRC05. So, PRC05, I'm now. Go to the student. I'm going to click on it and edit and then add it. I click on edit now. I'm going to add the roles. <clears throat> Click on add roles. So first is manufacturing engineer, which is required for your manufacturing execution now. I do that. Only what definition is there? Manufacturing execution is not there. If I go there, Click on add the role now. And that's why you go there. Come on. I will now go to the production supervisor. So these two roles are mainly required for your manufacturing activity. Paste it now. So production supervisor is the one. Ora, I'm now going to do it. Click on it. Click on it. So I added the, the requisite roles for manufacturing actually. And remember, manufacturing roles do not need any data access actually. And then this is required. There are seven such roles available in supply chain. Fine, go there. And then this is a prime role. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then if you do it, you will now get the supply orchestration over here. Fine, go there. So it's a prime role. And then out of seven, at least you give this one. And the entire roles have been explained on my order management videos now. Fine, go there. Click on it. I'm now adding the supply chain operations manager. This will now provide you the supply orchestration. Fine. That will be given you. Given to you. And then afterwards, inventory manager is required. And take a copy of it. Go there. Inventory manager. <clears throat> so go to click on it. I will not add the inventory manager over here. Click on add role. <clears throat> and then afterwards, the receiving agent is required. Fine. So this is a pure procurement. And so what happens? It will not be available on this note. So click on it. Paste it down. So receiving agent Nora, I'm putting it down. So click on add roles. And then that here, I will now make it as a shipping manager. And then the warehouse manager is required for a put away, but I'm not going to do any put away. So I'm not using it. Otherwise, what happens? I need that also. Shipping manager is mainly required for pick confirmation, actually. Pick confirmation as well as uh, uh, your ship confirmation. Pick confirmation and ship confirmation needs this role, whereas a uh, pick release do not need any role at all. And remember, shipping manager is required for pick confirmation as well as uh, ship confirmation and good add roles. And that's it. Fine, go that click on it. So I know given all the requisite roles for the PRC 01, fine, go that click on it. Then click on the now. So we have one uh, ready made role available as a PRC, all that is for all the procurement activity. So I added the manufacturing engineer and the production supervisor, supply chain operations manager, inventory, and the receiving and the shipping manager. This much is sufficient for us now. Fine, go that click on it. I will now give a save and close. So that is now done. <clears throat> now, if you go there and see the supply orchestration and the work execution will be coming up on the main supply execution area. Fine, click on it now. I have a look at it. So those two roles were missing. Now fine, go that click on it. Supply execution now. You can now see that supply orchestration and then the work execution has to come now. Fine. So let me run this now. Fine. Go that click on it. Let me run the what's called. Uh, you go there. Whenever you create anything, any changes on the uh, on the it's called security console. You have a habit of running this import user role. Click on it. Click on search now. You know, go there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I have to go there. I have to go to the schedule to process. You go to the tools and then I will now go to the schedule to process and then I will now run the ESS job. The enterprise schedule services job. I click on it. <clears throat> So it's import percentage, user percentage, role percentage, and then you tab now. So import user role, so one, you run this now once. Any major changes, it syncs all the setups into the transaction systems now, but the system has got an inbuilt syncing. Uh, sometimes it takes a longer time, and so what happens this is the force syncing. So sync it now. <clears throat> so it's not running. So once when this is completed, what happens? You can say yes, rest assured that whatever you made changes in the security console will be getting reflected on the transactional system section. So I need work execution as well as supply orchestration on the supply chain management. Fine. Uh, so once when these two things are done, fine. Well, and then in the meantime, what happens? We'll now go and give the data access also. So go to the setup and maintenance. Remember, procurement roles do not need any data access, whereas inventory needs it. Inventory needs it. I click on search now. I will now go to manage percentage. Data percentage. Access percentage. Entry now. So I'll now go to the manage data access for users now. So I am now logged in as a PRC05. I will now click on plus now. I'll now add it. So it's a PRC05 and then give it a tab. So first for inventory manager, go there in the inventory organization. 002 is the one in which what happens, I'm going to work upon. Fine, give it that. Sorry, sorry. It is there. Uh, 
cancel. It is a zero, zero, two. So it's a one. And then I will not duplicate it. I will not duplicate it. I will not put the receiving agent over here. Receiving agent is the one. I am going to put it now. Then go there. For the inventory organization, it is a zero, zero, two. <clears throat> and then I click on duplicate again. And then I will not give the shipping. The shipping manager is responsible for pick confirmation as well as ship confirmation. Remember, we need uh, the role now. Pick release do not need any role. Any need, need, need data access is not required for the pick release process. Whereas for pick confirmation and ship confirmation, this is absolutely required. I need to duplicate it now. So inventory manager, receiving manager, shipping manager, and then what else here? <clears throat> so production supervisor, inventory, receiving, and shipping are the three ones which needs data access. Now, so the remaining do not need any data access. That's it, fine. So I will not delete it now. I will not clear it, fine, clear it. So only three are required. And click on save and close by which what happens. We are now given it for zeros into R. So this is now done. So let me go on the load and login and then see now, fine. Because the changes will now sometimes reflect only after logging in now, fine. Click on confirm and then come out of it now. So click on sign in and then I go there. I will not click on the supply execution, supply chain execution. And then see the work execution as well as the supply orchestration has come on. Fine, click on it. So the work execution has come, supply orchestration has come. One chi. These two things have come now. Fine, these two things are coming. And again, supply chain, supply orchestration uh, is now coming because of this role now, fine? Because remember, supply chain operations manager is a very important role. And then uh, this role is sufficient for your basic activities. But if you want to go for order management, there are five such things on supply chain. Other, other than seven are there, right? If all of them are given, it will work perfectly as far as order management is concerned now, fine? So, but this is sufficient, fine, for our activity. I know given it. So, the supply orchestration icon has come. This doesn't need any data access, actually. Fine, go there. Any doubts? Anybody? <clears throat> so, it's all clear now. So, the role is now come and completed. So, I have now given this now. Fine, go there. So, this third step is also completed. I the data access now. Fine, go there. Now, we will now go and then create our work area. Work area is a new concept. It is not there in EBS at all. Fine, it is not come. So, go to the work definition now. Fine, click on the work definition of this. We will now go and get our work area. Click on it. Click on the task carousel on this, and then click on manage work area, and then we'll create our work area. We're going to create our work area. And click on plus now. So we'll now go and create our work area over here now. So paste it over here, and then end, and then I remove all the extra, extra spaces actually. The home and end, there may be some extra spaces. So I just remove it and click on seven close by which what happened? The work area is now created. So work area is a, is a, is a new one, new concept in Fusion, whereas there is not there in EBS at all. And then afterwards, not done. So I'll go there. Fifth step is what I'm now going to manufacture. I'm now going to have the work centers. Work centers are equal to departments of EBS now. So go there, click on it. I'm going to take over it and then okay. Click on it. Click on it. We'll go there. So click on it. Manage work centers the one. There. And then let me create it. Click on plus. I'm not going to get work center now. <clears throat> uh, the name, it will not take approximately an hour's time now. Be patient enough. <laughs> Because I am now setting up each and everything and then I am demonstrating it to you. So the work area is A01 and then what app. And then the supply sub inventory, I am going to say from where you are going to supply now. I am going to say stores, I am going to supply it now. <clears throat> it is not a located control. I will know, I will know later on add the resources. Now. The departments will be containing the resources actually. So as of now, I don't have any resources. I am not going to find that on it. So I am now creating a work center actually. I am going to check on seven tools. End outs. That's it. So my PC assembly shop, Madras PC assembly shop is there. That is the department which order. I'm going to perform all the operations now. So now I will now go to the manage plan parameters. The task now. <coughs> click on it. So click on done now. It does not go there. Go to the task now. It's a 50 step process. We have the fifth step now. I click on it. So go to the setup of maintenance. Any doubts, just ask me then there. Click on it. And then I go there. Click on search now. Go to the manage plan parameters. <coughs> so click on the manage plan parameters. So here, uh, uh, the manufacturing calendar I'm going to use it as operations. We are not going to in depth of the manufacturing actually. I'm just leaving it as such now. Fine, that you want it. So other ones I'm now leaving it. So in the manufacturing training, I'll be explaining each and every field on this now. And when I'm conducting the manufacturing training, I don't know when I'm going to do it. Now, fine, I'll be doing it a bit later now. So go to the next one. The plan date is okay. I'm not making any changes on this now. Fine. The ones when the assembly is completed, it'll be going into the completed sub inventory. Fine, that it is now all the materials are going to be supplied from the stores now. Stores is supplied. Fine, fine. This is the default picking. I know that you want it. <clears throat> well, you want it. Starting operation is 10, and then it will be incrementing in fine. Okay, fine. Uh, phantom operations are only metal only. It can even have what uh, metal resource also, but normally it will be material. So we can even choose the defaults as such now. Fine, go to the next one now. 
and the work definition of one. So go there, work order prefix. So what you can do is you can even uh, customize it to the inclines name file. Let us say we are now implementing it for, let us say, uh, Tata. I will say Tata underscore. Is a work order prefix. Fine. Every, it will be coming up to that. Work order starting number will be one. one and the two one. So the remaining, I'm leaving it as it's now fine. Here, the purchase requisition trigger. Fine. In this place, if you go on and have a look at it now. Fine. So once when I uh, release, when I complete the st state 10, 10th operation is basically what we are now going to bend the sheet metal and then we are going to make it as a cabinet actually. So once when it is completed, we are going to send it to engraver. So we have to make a purchase order. So what I'm doing is only upon operation 10 completion, operation 10 completion, I'm going to create a purchase requisition actually. So I will say it is no, instead of work order release, I will now make it as what prior operation completion. You can choose whichever way your end client wants. Now, right? I'm going to make it as a prior operation completion. So only when operation 10 is completed, the purchase requisition is not triggered now. Fine. Then what is I made this change. So, uh, Nana, Nana yeah. ji, if you have the first operation as OST, yeah. then you should always put uh, work order. Work order oh, the oh, oh. yes. so good one. Abhinandan has given a very good information. If uh, there are 10 operations, the first operation is OSP operation, you have to choose work order release only. Fine. Or if I make it like this, upon releasing the job, will it not release? If you make like this, if you make yeah, the first. First one will only release uh, prior operation completion. If you do, oh, yeah. then if the operation 10 is OST, then oh. you have to, then it will not release. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. okay. it's also the same. Okay, fine. The prior operation completion, what happens when you, upon release itself, the requisition will be triggered for the first operation and that's okay. The remaining, I'm not touching. I'll be teaching it everything only in a, what's called in a manufacturing training, actually. And this is the maintenance, actually. So there are so many tabs are there. So click on save and close now. Fine. I made one or two changes. One here is a prior operation completion, purchase requisition place. And then here, the work order prefix is start underscore. Click on save and close now. Fine. So, Nana, JJ, this side. Uh, I have seen OSP, no? When uh, you release the job, no? That time itself, it re releases the... Yeah, if you make it as this, now, fine. If you make it as a work order release, it will be going like this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you make it as a work order release... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Correct. <laughs> if there are three suppliers, for all the suppliers, the requisition gets triggered actually. Yeah, yeah. But you mentioned prior. Yeah, just for understanding purposes, I'm not doing prior, prior, okay. prior, and prior operation. For, for this training purposes, I'm doing it now. But no. you do it as per the actual needs. Okay. okay. No, prior is, uh, see, pr uh, Nanaji, prior is actually good <laughs> because the PO will not be waiting. Uh -huh. Because what happens is, is the PO will become, the PO will age. Until oh, you complete oh, yeah, your yeah. prior operation. Very good. I mean, then, so let us say the second supplier is now going to do an operation after 10 days time. The PO will be aging for 10 days if you're using what the work order is. A good, good observation. Fine. Any other observations, please tell us now. Fine. So Avinandan is saying that it is preferable. Like otherwise, what about the PO will be aging for 10 or 15 days? So, right? That is not a correct way. So allow the once when the previous operation completes, you trigger the PO creation. That's a good one. Fine. That's it. Fine. We are cancel now. <clears throat> Avinandan is an expert in uh, manufacturing actually. And then he is now working on the process manufacturing also. So I got a good guy to guide me on this also. Fine, very good. Fine. Fine. So this is now made fine with the Tata underscore and then prior operation completion as a one. Fine, go there, click on it. So the seventh step, fine, go there, click on the seventh step now. Seventh step, I'm going to create an item now. Fine, sheet metal, I'm going to create. Go there, click on it. So let me go and create a sheet metal. Fine, go there, click on it. <coughs> so click on done now. I'm now going to get the first item. So go to the home icon and then you go to the product information management, my product management and then product information management that will create an item. So I'm now going to get an item. I want it. Go there. So I'll now go to the create item. So I'm now going to create an item. <coughs> so operation 0, so fine, go there, click on it. So uh, it's a design. It doesn't matter. It's a simple one. And then we'll now accept the default template. Fine, click on OK now. Fine. Click on OK. It's OK. <coughs> So it's a simple component only. Uh, so for which, what happens if we go there and then paste this item over here now, fine, go there. So it's a sheet metal, fine, go there, click on a description and pasting it over here now, fine, click on it. And then if you go to the specifications and have a look at it. So it was having some uh, design, uh, FG, FG template actually. So for us, the important one is what on the inventory, you must have the item defining attribute and then status attribute properly done, fine, item defining item is, unit item is just stockable, transactable, reservable, everything is on now, fine, go there. So uh, inventory item is a item defining attribute, the stock and then these are all status attributes, fine, everything is okay. Uh, this is miserable, is more than sufficient for us and go there, go to the association that will be associated with the child or. A01 sheet metal is the one, fine, go to the actions and go to select that. Let me choose my 00 to R and then do it now, fine, 00 to entry now. <coughs> 
with it. Select it and click on apply and done. So by which what happens? The first item gets created now. So give it there. So go to what happens? That drop down and then save and close by which the item gets created. Now. The sheet metal is now created, which is a component of a PC assembly actually. So that you want it. And then afterwards, I will now go then make this item also. Fine. This is the final item. So I'm going to use two such items over here. Now. Fine. So you want it. I will now go to this place and then click on create item. <coughs> And then uh, click on OK. We can accept the standard template over there. Now, fine. Right. Paste it over here now. Uh, oh, and then enter now. Fine. Right. Paste it over here now. <clears throat> and then this is also OK. Fine. Go, there. go to the associations. Now, let me associate to the child or no. the associations. Mm -hmm. Actions. And then go to the so you can mute your mic. And then uh, whenever you want to speak, you can speak now. <clears throat> Apply and done. And let's put your mic over there. You go to the drop down and then click on save and close now. So let me mute the participants now. Mute all. So whenever you want to speak, you can open up your mic and then speak. So these two items are now created. Now I will now create the PC cabinet itself. There's a cabinet now here. It is a finished good actually. Take a copy of the mark. Please. So eighth step we are in now. I go there, click on it. We'll now go there, click on it, click on data item. <clears throat> and then the FG design is there, fine. Click on OK now. <clears throat> So paste it over here, and then I click on it, and then paste it over here. Now, and go there. Put the specifications, and then the manufacturing. You can just see, fine. It will be a standard bomb now. And go there. So it is a standard. And go there. Click on it, and then it's okay. Fine. Costing is anyone. I'm not doing any costing and actually inventory asset value. These are all eligible for. This is the item defining attribute, and then inventory asset value is a status attribute for costing purposes. Now, and go there. It's okay. And then I will now go to the sales and order management to the FG. Now, and go there. Click on it. So here I have the customer ordered as well as the customer orders enabled is on. Now, and go there. Click on it. And then here in this place, orderable on web must be no no actually fine. It should be no fine. Make it as a no no. So it's okay. Uh, and then uh, it is not orderable on the web. Now, and go so uh, as far as the listing is concerned, fine. We have got all the uh, uh, FG attributes basically. It's basically done. And then uh, uh, if you go there, <clears throat> uh, what's called in the manufacturing, if you see, it must be enabled for manufacturing actually. So contract manufacturing is enabled. Fine, go click on it. Where is the manufacturing attribute here? Building whip must be on actually. Yeah. Building whip is on. So we can very well manufacture it in the manufacturing area. No? Building whip is on. In the manufacturing area. Now you go there, go to the associations, and then here, whatever you go there, click on it. And then I will now, first of all, save this. Now, fine, click on save. So the cabinet is now getting saved over here. Now you have to make a bill. Now, fine. Once then you save it in the master. Order. So create the bill for the above with the components of sheet metal and motherboard. So this is the FG, which is manufacturable basically. And then I'm going to create a bill here. And after saving it in the, in the master are going to. So you first of all create the item in the master. You now create the master. Now you go and then create a bill. So I will now go to the structures and then I get a bill. Go to actions and then go to what? Uh, what's called? I will now uh, create a bill now. Fine with that. So I'm now going to create a bill now. <clears throat> so click on create. So here I will now make it as what? Primary bill now. Fine with that. It's a primary bill. I will be conducting all these trainings in uh, my manufacturing training actually. Fine with that. Click on apply and add to details. Fine with that. I'm going to have two level components. Two components I'm going to add. So go there and then I'm this place now. I'm going to click on it. So go to actions and then go to select NAT. So let me query the A01. You'll now find two components coming up over here now. Find the A01, the one. So click on search now. You'll now find both <clears throat> So let me add both the links. Fine. I will now the left hand side select and then the control I'm selecting the next one also. I click on apply and I click on OK. Maybe these two components are getting added now. So this bill is now going to have two components now. <clears throat> And then uh, we will be having a lot of discussions in the manufacturing area. Fine, here go there. So I will now enable what happens. You go there, go to the view, and then I will now say uh, component order management. I will now view and then add the component order management over here. Now. I'm going to add it over here. Now. So go there, click on it. So the component order management will be having options and mutual exclusive. Fine, this is again a big subject. So I'm not choosing it now. Fine on this one. So mutually exclusive and optional it is a big subject again. So it is no optional is no means what it is a mandatory option class. This is also a mandatory option class. Fine, with that. mandatory options now basically. So we need both the components. If it is yes, we may or we may not have it. And again, mutual exclusive is another concept. Fine, this will be fully explained on the component order management in a real manufacturing training now. Fine. So go there, click on it. So that's it. Fine, go there. By which my bill is now getting completed. Any doubts on it now? They've got these two components now. Fine, go there. <coughs> go there. So my bill has got a sheet metal as well as a motherboard, motherboard RAM. Fine, only two components now. 
so these two components because this is required as the 10th operation this is required as the 40th operation so these two components form part of my bill lecture <coughs> component so what so motherboard ram uh, nana nana ji uh, can you just um, uh, see if there is a default uh, sub inventory oh okay you did not make it located but default sub inventory enabled uh, for the here we have in the bill itself you can make it i'm not sure about it uh, yeah okay, okay. that view i think so it was no, okay the sub inventory okay can you even make it as a default sub inventory also uh, component material control go to component material control uh, just no. just below that and material control yeah so what abhinandan is saying is that here you can even supply type is coming but yeah supply type will be push that is fine okay, but uh, sub inventory is uh, uh, just scroll supply uh, sub inventory is not, not there uh, it is not coming maybe maybe uh, in some other tab region it is no maybe on the view yeah 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 uh, the inventory will not see whether i enable inventory so i know enabled inventory see in the top now maybe he is saying that supply sub inventory can also be mentioned somewhere now in the inventory also lot merge enabled the usually it is mentioned in the item structure uh -huh. i mean in the structure structure so mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah, what are you saying is that in one of the tab regions you'll be able to see the supply sub inventory also when we are not we don't know we are unable to under because you have made uh, because you have made uh, supply type as push uh -huh. so you will have to move it to that sub inventory before uh, the uh, work uh -huh. definition can consume it uh, okay. so that is why otherwise you have set it up in the plant parameters which will uh -huh. oh. one of the supply sub inventory will be set up in the plant parameter that will be defaulting okay when we are that is default the stores will take, yeah. so the stores yeah. will default and then that can be overridden on the bill that is what you say and supply sub inventory yes. good then fine yes. i can done So my completion of the structure is now completed. Fine, I have made a is a primary one and give a save now. Just take, give a save now. So the structure is now created. So initially I made the FG and then I made the structure. Now I am going to assign to the child org. This is the way in which you are doing now. Fine, step by step. First you create the item and then afterwards you create the structure. Now you go there and then at every point of time you give a save now and give a save. Now you go there. Go to this place. Go to the association. Then let me associate with the child org now. So go to actions and go to select that. So I am going to add the child org. Zero zero two and enter now. Abhinandan, uh, can you give your email ID to the person because the worldwide people are going to see this now. Fine, can you pronounce your email ID so that they can even contact you directly? <laughs> And if you feel that not so, then I will leave it. Actually. No, no, that's fine. I'll put it on the chat. <laughs> no, you fine. just pronounce because the others cannot see the chat message. Actually, you just pronounce it. Oh, okay. So it's uh, so it's Abhinandan dot Saha A V I N A N D A N dot S A H A at gmail dot com. Fantastic. You must be a Bengali, na? No? Yes, I am. Bengali. <laughs> so Avinandan dot Saha at gmail dot com. You can even approach me. He is a very big man. And then uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> he knows a lot. Nothing but, like that. Actually, find out. So Avinandan Saha. Uh, uh, we have got so many people in my team who knows much, but uh, they don't have time to come and join this training. Actually, find out. So my zero zero two R is Atlanta. Then it is now assigned. And it is actually not assigned. Now give us seven close. So seven close. Which is good. Now let me query my item. And then I will now do the bill for the child now. Actually, what you wanted. So I go there. I will now go there. Click on it. Go to the browser items, and then I am going to query my item. Here is the one. <coughs> the PC cabinet. I am going to query is the FG item for which I have already created the bill of the master. And then I have to create the bill for the child now. So I go there. I will now choose this PC cabinet. I will now open up the child org. So zero zero two. Then the next one is zero zero two now. Fine, go there. So the second one is the one. Fine, go there. Click on it. So I am now opening it up on zero zero two. you can see in the organization also coming up and you know if you go to the structures the structure will not be existing remember when you when you assign an item the structure doesn't get assigned you only have to create it up and with the contactions and then the best method is to create from common it will be fully explained in the manufacturing thing now you can even have the option of creating a copy or manually creating it but create from common is the best one and we normally create all the common bills in the master and then assign it to various child docs by so create from common i'm going to do it now i'm going to create from common so my most org is operations and then go there i will not put the operations over here now And at any point of time, whenever you have a doubt, you can even write to me at nana dot app sixty at gmail dot com, n e n e dot a p p s six zero at gmail dot com for any clarification. You can write to me now. I'm going to go that. I have no popular item. I'm going to go to a zero one and then go to app. So once when you go to app, the item will be coming. That is the only thing which is having what's called a bill there now in the operations a zero one only one is coming. <coughs> This I am going to common it now. <coughs> so click on OK. Now the commoning process is nothing but an item import process which will be triggered now. and that will be happening 
So the process is now initiated. Thank God, I want it. I will now right click and then duplicate and then have a look at the uh, what's called. It has got a, it's a five step of uh, what's called import actually on item import. Fine, go to the schedule and I can see one by one all the processes will be triggered. And then once when everything gets succeeded, you will now find the bill getting commented onto the child actually. So item import has started now. And somebody was doing some other activity. Thank God, I want it. So item import process is now running. So after some time, you can now see that the child one. Uh, the key word such is the final one which will be running now. So once when that runs, that means what your import item import for the commoning has uh, got completed. So the the then see this now. <coughs> That's it. I know that. So we are now in the process of creating the structure actually. So the bill is now created and then it is designed. Then afterwards we are now done the commoning. <coughs> let me keep a stock of the item sheet metal now. I know that more. So let us now keep a stock of the sheet metal now. <coughs> Browse item fine. Give a what's called uh, it is already assigned now. I will now give a save and close now and then come out of it now. Save and close now. Then click on done now. So let us now go and then keep a stock and go that click on it. The inventory manager has got a data access, and so no problem at all. Fine, go that close the inventory management. <coughs> we are given the data access for zero zero to R, and so no problem at all. Fine, go that click on it. I will now make a miscellaneous reserve for this now. Stores is my supply sub inventory. If I click on create miscellaneous transaction, I'm going to go there. So the type is miscellaneous, MISC, miscellaneous result. I'm going to go there. So let me choose the result. I'm going to click on it. And then I will now choose one existing account. Fine. This will be taught in the financial training and even in my procurement training. Also, a good amount of ideas is given on this. Now, I click on it. Go there. Click on it. I will now make this as yes now. And then I click on plus now. Fine. For sheet metal, I'm going to keep a stop now. I click on plus. And then let me go to the sheet metal over here now. So it's a A01 and then do a tab now. <clears throat> so let me put the sheet metal over here now. I click on okay. Just keep a watch on the recording icon. If it goes away, please tell me now. Okay. Go there. I'm not going to have the supply sub inventory as stores now. I'm going to click on stores and then keep a stock now. Fine. Okay. I will now keep a stock of thousand. The second item, I'm not having a stock. And remember, manufacturing can very well supply even if there is no stock at all. Inventory can be driven negative in a manufacturing operation. <coughs> so the second component is not going to have any stock. The first component is not having a stock now. <coughs> so the transaction, miscellaneous transaction is now happening now. Fine. You can now see the R coming up on the top now fine. because of the data access now. So in the meantime, what happens? You know, go to the goods place and then Query for it now. Fine, go that one. It will now see whether the item import is now completed or not. So, item keyword search is the last one. It has got succeeded actually. Fine, item import child, and then uh, all other things for that. So, for item import, this is basically an uh, commoning is nothing but an item import. Everything has got succeeded properly. Fine, go that one. Now, over there, what happens? We will not go there. There's no doubt. Now, I will now create a OSP item for us for our use now. Fine, go that click on it. So, we will take a copy of the OSP item. Fine, for which, uh, let me show you something on the what's called your. Uh, 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 what's called the template also? Fine, go to the setup and maintenance. <clears throat> we can even create our own template. Now, fine, go to the click on it. So, to give a glance of that, now I'm not doing it. Now, go, go to the manage item class. Entry now. So, manage item class is the one. Fine. Don't go for this now. Fine, this is only for PIM now. This is only for the <coughs> inventory actually. Manage item class. Do not go for the default item class. Go for the manage item class. Now. It doesn't have much of a relevance when compared to inventory, pure inventory. Only when you have PIM, all other subclasses are basically having a lot of meanings. Now, I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to the space. I will go there. I will now go to the template directly. Is all, all explained fully in my training? You will understand. I'm going to the template now. Let me query the template of outside processing and then I will now create my own. Now, I'm going to the query example now. And then uh, query for the out. Out. And then the organization is operate organization zero zero so entry now it will be coming. So let me take a copy of it now. Let me copy it now. I'm not going to make a copy of it now. And then I will now say <coughs> click on what's called uh, this is the I will now uh, what's called the one. So I will now add the organization fine click on plus. <coughs> <coughs> not well actually. Select the plane done now. It is not done. <coughs> So click on okay. Is Atlanta is an organization which what happened? I'm going to make this complete now. So keep my customer on this place now. Right. I would say processing for us now. I'm going to click on it. I will now edit it and then change the name also. Then if I click on edit now, <coughs> I will now say <coughs> uh, outside processing. 
template node. It's going to hide my code. It's going to be template. Template node. I will not set as a default also. I'm not accepting any template node. Okay. Because no one will do that. So at every point of time, give a save in the top. Now. As in when you keep on modifying it, you give a save. Now. So there's one. They go there. Life cycle phase, I will not make it as a production component. So it's okay. The user type is only for information purposes. It doesn't matter whatever you give, no fine. It's only for information purposes. Go there. So the primary unit is okay. If you go to the specifications, if you go to the specification, the important specification for OSP is what? <coughs> you go there, go to the purchasing. And then we have an attribute for this now. It is not available in EB is not fine. Go there. So yet we have an attribute for this now. Outside processing service, make it as yes. Fine. This is the attribute of that. I will not make the purchasing claims as one now. So this is an important attribute for us. And then again, go to the sales and order management and then make this as no, no, fine. Order on the web must be no, actually. Fine. It's not coming, it's okay. Fine. Otherwise, what happens if you go to the sales and order management, if you, what happens, then customer order is also no, no, fine. It doesn't matter. So we'll see whether it gets saved or not. Sometimes it doesn't get saved means what? We have to make it as no, no, fine. Orders. So I'm now making a new template now. This is not fine. So the important one is what outside processing is yes actually. Outside processing is on a given list price also. And then the purchased and purchased order is the item defining attribute and status attributes are on for this now for this item. <coughs> Go there, give a save now. You can see that it's saved now. The template is not getting saved now. It will save now. <coughs> template will not have any much of a problem. So let me edit it and then you know try to make it as a default. No, fine. You can even make it as a default. It is not coming at all. Otherwise, what happens? You can set it as a default. Tata outside processing template is the one fine. You can save now. That's it. So we have now created our own template now. <clears throat> so give a save and close, and then let us now go on the get our item. You know, where to get it? Now you go there. You go to the home icon, and then go there, and then get our item. Now. So you go to the product management, and then you go to the product information management, <clears throat> and then let us now create an item. So the OSP item is now getting created. Now. Okay, two OSP items are available now. So first one is an engraving OSP item. Now. So we will now go there. Click on it. So I will now throw it out now. Let me bring it out and then I will now choose the data, data OSP. So this way you can very well create your own templates and then you can use it now. Come on, where is it? It's not coming. Don't item class. Outside browsing item is there. Mine is not coming. I think we may have to log out and log in. Now, whenever you make some major changes, what happens? You have a habit of logging out and logging in for the changes to take place actually. So that is not visible now for that to <coughs> And then sign in now, and then you will now have a look at it. So go to the product management, and then go to the product information management. Click on it. Go there. So click on create item. The one we are doing it now. I will now remove it, and then see whether it's coming or not. Go, 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 go. Where is mine? Yeah, fine. Come on, it's not coming. I have done the same now. <clears throat> Maybe some mistake I made it now. I think it's not coming exactly. What is the mistake, anybody? Okay, I will now apply this outside closing item. My Tata outside closing is not coming. Some mistakes are bad. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, ho, ho. I have done it for what happens. The child dog. It has to be done for the master dog, actually. I have done it for the child dog. So I should have done it for the child. Uh, child uh, zero, zero, zero. It will be coming. Otherwise, what happens? There is a mistake. Now. That it. <coughs> not done. Life cycle basis production. Make a change and then go there. Click on it. You go to the specifications now. Yeah, they have not made a change actually on the template. So that's why we only have to make it now. So make the outside processing service as yes now. And then give this price now. So these are two things which are important as far as the OSP is concerned now. Give a save now. <coughs> See, it is now saying uh, uh, the orderable on web must be. Off mode. If it is there, it will not work at all. So he go there, he go to the sales and order management, and then here the orderable on whip is now coming automatically. Is yes, no fine. It has been made as no fine for which what happens? It is now grayed out also. So to bring it on, what you will do is you make the customer the item defining attribute is on, the status attribute is on, and then afterwards you go and then make it as no. So it is yes, it's a grayed out. Now we will now see whether it accepts it or not. Click on save now. <clears throat> So the outside processing item is now accepted and then it is now saved actually fine. The specifications order alone is not. So our important specification as far as the OSP is concerned now is what you must be having OSP as yes and then the purchase price and you know that I will now go to association that let me associate with the child or <coughs> actions and then go to certain act. So it's a 002 and then enter now. 
my template was not made in the master it was made in the child's master right there's a mistake also so it's not a so go there my engraving osp item is ready fine give a save and close now <clears throat> go there go for the next item fine go there so, so the spray painting is an is a, is a osp item fine go there click on it i will not make it as what go there so take a cover with the go there and then i'll not paint this item <clears throat> very great item and then here go there click on okay now i will not paste this item over here now Ensure that there is no extra spaces over here. No? Sometimes when you're copying and pasting and you're putting some extra spaces, oh God, I made a mistake. Now I forgot to it. I should have applied a OSP template actually. If I load this template actually, I forgot to it. I should apply OSP template actually. Forgot to <coughs> go to the create item, and then here I will now go there. Throw this out, cheapo, and then go there. Bring it down. Bring the offset, close it all there. Now. Click on it. Click on it. Okay. And then I'll now paste this item over here. <coughs> Life cycle basis production of an electronic. And then here, before you start, I go to the specifications <coughs> and then go to the order management directly. And then make the item defining attribute and status attributes on now. <coughs> and then remove the order blend. Go to the purchasing and then give a list price. I will make it as two now and then make it as yes. That's it. So this becomes an offset closing item and give a save now. We'll see whether it gets saved or not. It is now getting saved in the master. And then let me assign it to the child doctor. And go to the associations. And then let me assign it to the child doctor. Go to actions and go to self net. So I'm assigning it to the child doctor. Zero zero two. <clears throat> so apply and done. So it is not done. Go to that. So what? Up? What is the mistake? I done. It's not coming. Go to the association section. Self net. <clears throat> oh, I have not queried at all. Query and then apply and done. I have queried and applied. So it's not coming. Thank you. That's your point. I will give a save and close now. I will not query this previous item whether I have <coughs> doubt on it now. <coughs> Go to the close items whether it has been assigned to the child or not. A01. Enter it now. You know, see, engraving, there are two entries are there. And then uh, the spray painting also we have into it. It's okay. That means what they're all assigned. Everything has been to render, 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 render. And go down. <coughs> this is also good. So all of them are assigned actually. Fine, click on done. That's it. So now we will not have to have a what happens a work order accounting has to be done. Otherwise, what happens? It will be failing actually. And then that will be fully explained on my uh, manufacturing on the accounting part now. So go this place. <clears throat> what is the setup and maintenance? The work order account has to be properly set. Otherwise, what happens? It will be throwing in error actually. So go there. Make it as manufacturing and supply chain management. And then go to the manage mapping sets. It will be explained on my manufacturing team now. Right? Manage mapping set. So go for this one and then go for the cost accounting. So the functional area is cost accounting. Fine, go there. Go to the management set and then again choose the area now. Fine, go to select that and then choose the cost management. Fine, click on apply and go to task <clears throat> and then choose the cost management now. So go there. Go to the cost management and then click on save and close and the side now. And then we are going to query for the work order now. The work order we are going to query. Fine, select it and then go for the work order. An entry has to be there, otherwise accounting will be a problem for the work order. We will not see whether they have made the entry for the 002 or not. It must have been done right. When you start up account is account, fine, go that's correct. So they have made an entry for 002 or So otherwise we can even add one default for all the things, fine, star, 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 and then on account. So that will take care of all the organizations actually. Otherwise, org specific work order accounting is required actually. Fine. Any doubts on this one? So 002 is already there. So no need to modify anything at all, fine, it will work perfectly. So, so this is have, actually a VIP accounting class. VIP accounting VPS. class, exactly. Yeah, it's a, actually a VIP accounting class. So it is equivalent to VIP accounting class of EBS basically. So I'm not saving anything. I'm not giving cancel. So work order accounting is not done. It's an outside process. So now what happens? I'm going to create the resource now. Fine. So let us now create the resource now. Fine. So take a copy of it and go there. Go to this place. Click on done. And then I'll go there. Go to the home icon. And then you go to the supply chain execution and then go to the work definition. Now. I click on the home icon. And then go to the supply chain execution, go to the work definition, and then we are going to create a resource. So click on it and then go there. So go to manage resources. And the way the order in which you are doing, you can do it anyway. <clears throat> I'm not doing it in one way, and it doesn't matter that it has to match the same thing. You can paste it okay now and go back on the code now and description. And the type, it may be a labor or equipment. In this case, the labor now and the class. The class is not coming. I don't know why, because some setups are still missing now on this one. Usage is each now. <clears throat> and that's it. 
costing i am not enabling i will learn it now fine once i learn i'll be doing it now save and close so so the vendor now otherwise what about you know the save and continue or otherwise drop it down and save and create another one. another another resource i'm going to create now that you want so i will now make the assembler also so i will now have two such resources on this now fine that you want paste it paste it <coughs> paste it type is a labor uim is each save and close so two resources are now created on this zero one <coughs> Now we have to make him as a procurement agent. So go there. So here, uh, ERC zero five is a student. He they might not have made him as a procurement agent actually. Make it now. Otherwise, supplier sites cannot be created and the purchase orders cannot be created. Now make a check of it. <coughs> I'm pasting this task manage procurement <coughs> agent actually. Manage procurement agent is the one. <coughs> go there. So let me query my agent now. Fine, it's a PRC zero five dot student now. Fine, S T U D E N T dot PRC zero five. Click on search now. I'm not seeing that is there or not. It's not there. Fine, let me go and add it. Let me add the student now. Fine, go it. So procurement BU is US US one business unit now. So US one business unit is the one, and then the agent is what student comma PRC zero five. Fine, that's the one. Thank you. Last name come on first name and go there. The US one and then I know make it as full. You know, give full access to all other agents' documents actually. Full and then go down. Full and then give a save now. So by which he has now become an agent now. Fine, I can save and close. Now you can very well make the supplier sites as well as you can even make a purchase orders. Not done. Now I'm not going to get the supplier. Now, that. So let me create my first supplier. Find that one. The Bombay engraver. Actually, <clears throat> this place cannot done now. So since it is a PRC role, find supply creation very much possible. Now, find that role is also added on the PRC all now. I cannot make payment. And then you can supply. So go there and then click on create supplier. So we are now creating a supplier actually. <clears throat> so supplier is what? This is the one engraver. And then go there. It is a spend authorized supplier. I know that. Come on, I am not making the corporation. The remaining are not applied. They are all fully explained on my uh, procurement training. I cover all the six pillars of procurement training now. So click on create now. So we are going inside <clears throat> and then it will now complete the creation of the supplier. B A zero one Bombay engraver is the first supplier now. Is spend authorized supply. We can very well place the purchase order on it if it is a spend authorized. If it is going to be prospective, we cannot place a purchase order. We can only print the RFQs and quotes actually. <clears throat> we can send an RFQ and then we can get a quote. I know that. So the business relationship is now established as spend authorized. We go inside and then we are going to continue creating the supplier actually. <clears throat> so go there. Then afterwards, I'm now going to give a username also so that you can even go to the user supply portal actually. The supply portal can very well do it now. So since we are opening up this form for the first time, it is not taking a long time. It will come over there and let me want it. And then here in the payments, whatever you can make, all the payment is a default payment now. Normal payment. Then we now make normal payment as a default payment. And we'll check as a default payment. And we'll select it. And then go there. Make it a default. The remaining things are not required. It is again a profiling section. And then uh, we can even <coughs> go for an approval also. Thank you for saying. So whenever a whenever a profile goes for a change, we can even uh, trigger an approval. So the profiling is now complete. Now, fine. We can even put the business classification, product and services, etc., etc. So click on the addresses and then now create address. <clears throat> so click on plus one. Now we get address. So the first address is now getting created. Any doubts at any time? What happens? Please ask me. Fine. A zero one underscore engraver. Fine one. Countries: United States. Tab no. Using the United States name over there. Address line one. So go there. It's a A zero one underscore E N G underscore line one. So I will now go to the postal code one zero zero zero. These numbers are only for easy understanding, but in real time, I was going to give the real names and addresses and the make ordering and remit enabled. And then I am going to give what I was one of my email address. Fine over there. The Nana dot. Sixty at gmail.com. So go there, orders. 
and then go down and then go to the sites and then go to actions then go to, and there is no possibility of now creating the address only and go that one so this much is sufficient go to the payment again whereas in ebus when you make the payments as a default on the supply level it defaults on the site level here it is not so we only have to make it one of them as a default manually in ebus it defaults over there now and go that one so that's it and go there so do not enable all the three if you enable all the three we can do only rfq and bidding and then you cannot place purchase orders and payables now basically it is same concept in ebus now so remove it and then keep only these two if these two are enabled we can very well do the rfq and bidding also and then what us and go that you want so the address is now created <coughs> go there you save and close now you know that so we are now completely cleaning what us will now go and get a contact the contact is residing on this address <coughs> so it's not done and go there put the contacts and then we'll be getting a contact so click on plus one and the rotate the contact <coughs> So go there. First name is what? Ananta one, and then the last name is Nana one. The system creates a username as what? First name dot last name. That is Ananta one dot Nana one. But we'll now make a change later on. Okay, go there. So I will now put this Nana dot app sixty at gmail dot com. There is an ebus. The email ID will be the user ID here. The first name dot last name is the user ID as per the supplier's concern. Okay, go there. Right. So go to actions. <coughs> then go to select that. We have got only one address. I'm going to associate this. The contact to this address now. <coughs> He is now associated. I will now make a user account. Now. Find create user account. So the system defaults uh, this many roles to the user actually. Find supply user. <clears throat> Whatever he wants to, he can very well do. He can even uh, remove it or add more thing. And go that one. It is not done. Find go that. That's it. So the contact is now created with the username also. But email is not a username. Remember, first name dot last name is username. And we will now make a change of it now, actually. We will save and close by which the contact is now completed. Now go there and then create a site actually. So the contact resides on this address actually. <clears throat> so I'm not giving you. So now there is no safe thing with that point. So since we have made this PRC zero five as a procurement agent, if you go to the site, it will be getting a plus point. Otherwise, other than the plus will not be coming. If you are not a procurement agent, we cannot create a site at all. Sites can be created only by the procurement agent. <coughs> Procurement agent is not a role; it is a task actually. And drop it down and then choose this now. So once when you choose it, the site name will be getting defaulted. Fine, go there. I will now make it as a site one now. Make a change. Fine, go there. Remove it. And then give a save. The remaining will be getting enabled. Thank you for save now. Be enabled. So we have done a lot of discussions about the purchasing and everything. I'm not going to touch any of this thing now. Go there. Come on. So I will give a save now. These things, these tab regions will be enabled upon save now. So you go to the invoicing and then I will now make it as US dollars on this now. <coughs> Just dollars, and then the payment currency is also just dollars for this exercise. You can choose anything as per the requirement. What is the site assignment? It is equivalent to multi-org access control of eBase. Now, find go that click on actions and go to self net. Do not do the auto createment of the mission. Now, right? mission will be creating so many, and then add it manually. Find go that add it manually. The mission when you're doing it, add it manually actually. Go there. The US one. This is unit now. Right. So the building unit will be same. The client view and the billing view same. Find go that. So it's Atlanta. <coughs> Is zero zero two now? Zero zero location. Can you ask me a question? What? T T Atlanta. <clears throat> so that's it. Fine. Go there. Site is now getting created. Fine. Go there. Click on it. So go further. Go further. And that's it. Fine. Go there. Click on save. <clears throat> It is not done now. Find that. So the ship to location is Atlanta. Built to location. Whenever the supplier supplies, he will be supplying to these two places now. So here, if you go there, so if you go and then see this now, <clears throat> uh, if you go to the general tab region on the site, now, yeah. so it is a A1 engraver line which is there in the new R. Now, seven. That's it. So it's now completed. Thank you for seven close. So by which we are now completing the site creation also. <clears throat> now finally submit. Whenever you have a submit button, we have to submit it. By which what happens? We get created. The site gets created. The Bombay engraver is ready. Similarly, what happens? We now go on and get our spray paint. <clears throat> So A zero one. Uh, here we will now create the second supplier. So go there. So click on it. Then go to the create account. You go to the create supplier. Click on create supplier. So this is supplier name. Spend authorized. And then it is corporation. And then click on create now. 
we are creating it and then go to the payments now. Are you there? Anybody? Are you understanding everything? Anybody can you see? Go to the click on it, click on save. Yeah, yeah, Nanaji, we are here. Okay, very good. So go to the address now. <clears throat> and click on plus. I will now say A01 underscore spray underscore address to you know, that is the engraver is the address of my wallet wallet. So United States. <coughs> so nine is what A01 spray. I will now say line one. And then go to the postal code and then populate a postal code. The remaining thing will be coming on. I choose it now. And then choose the ordering and commit to. And I will now put another mail ID apps.mana at gmail.com. <coughs> go there, no demo. So go to the payments. And then make one of them as a default payment plan. I will check the default payment plan. Enable it. It is not done now. No, no, no. So the address is now created. If they make any mistake, please, there and there, you point out to me. So that what happens, I won't be erroring out when I'm doing the transaction actually. So same and close. And that's it, fine. Go the key point. I will now go to the contacts and then let me create a contact now. Click on plus now. And I will go to create a contact. So I will now say it's Ananta2, Nana2. And that will be the username. Oh, no, 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 Oh, my puja is going on. Actually, <laughs> I can't help it. Okay. Go there. Contact the actions and go to self mat. Go there. Is orders. And then I'll now create a user account for this now. So all the roles are added actually. Go to it. So apps.nana. <clears throat> That's it. Any other thing is missing now. Find that contact is now created along with that. Doesn't the username also find that tomorrow. So give a save and close now. <clears throat> you know that. Find go there. Go to the sites and then let us get a site actually. So click on plus now. So drop it down. I'm gonna choose this now. So I will now make it as a site two now. Site two. Okay. And then give a save so that which all this averaging will be getting enabled now. So go to the payments. And go to the invoicing first and then put the currencies now. US dollar. This is again a US dollar now. <clears throat> so that's it. Frank, go there. Click on the payments now. So payment is not okay. Frank, go to the site assignments after invoicing. Go to the site assignments and then add the manual site assignments. Okay, now Frank, go to action and go to add now. This is a US one. So it's Atlanta. Meeting your voice, Manaji. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now it's coming. Uh, we are not able to hear you. Oh, oh, oh. What about others? Are you able to hear me? <clears throat> Hello, others. Can you hear me? So I have now given these two things. Not, uh, we are able to hear you. Okay, very good. Very good. So all these things are there, fine. Click on save and then save and close by which the site assignment is not completed. We'll now submit it by which the second supplier is now getting here. And click on submit now. So now we'll now modify the usernames for these two suppliers. So we'll now go there, go to this place home, and then I click on what you go there, go to this place. You go to the tools and then go to the schedule, so to the security console, and then we'll now modify the names of the users actually. Go to the users. Let me query the Ananta user. So there are two users, there are Ananta one and Ananta two, and open it up. <clears throat> so the username is what? Click on edit now. So it is ananta one dot nana one. So let me change it now. Fine, go to the a zero one underscore eng. Fine, I like that I'm making it. Fine, give us seven close now. That's it. So I'm going to give it the seven close. A zero one eng is the one. Fine, click on seven close now. The username is saved. And then you know these are the passwords also. <clears throat> so the first username is saying that the a zero one eng is a supplier portal. My user actually. <clears throat> So click on these are passwords and then I'll be having what a manual password here. Do the user. Welcome one two three. Give a tab now. Welcome one two three. So click on reset password. The password is now reset for the first user. Similarly, we'll now do the change of the username and then the password for the second user. Now. Click on that now. Open up the second user now. <coughs> and then click on edit now. 
So I will now say EA01 underscore SPREAY. That is ENG. This is spray. No? So that's it. Outside and then click on save and close now. And then launch the transfer. So. <coughs> so both the supplier users are now created. So reset passwords. And then you go to the manual now. And click on it. So welcome. One, two, three. You are tab now. Welcome. One, two, three. And then click on reset password now. The passwords are reset for these users actually. So click on now in order. So you go there and then you know open up what's called another browser. Two browsers I need it for them to supply to login actually. Take copy it and then I'll open up the Mozilla browser. Ah, uh, I will now open up the Mozilla browser and I will now paste it in here. I will not choose this now. <coughs> Engraver, I'm going to log in. As well as spray, also I'm going to log in. So A01 underscore ENG, and then it is welcome one two three. Issue. I now remember it also. We go there. We are now logging in as a supplier actually. <coughs> so click on the supply portal. It will be going inside. The supply portal. Now come over here. So similarly, I will now open up Opera now. Opera. I will now open up. So here also I will now go there. Click on it. Something else. So it's A01 spray. Welcome on to the entry now. So we go there. So this supplier is also logged in. I click on the supply button. So on the Opera, we have a spray painter, and then on the Mozilla, we have this one. That's it. So we now come back to ours now. I'm not going a slightly bit fast, and then if you have any doubts, you just ask me, stop me and ask me. <coughs> so now the users are created and then the, the username is changed and the password is no longer there. We are logged in also as a user. Now we are going to create a standard operation called what? A01 Bombay Engraver. We are now creating standard operations. So go there. So, <clears throat> so both the OSP operations I am going to create as a standard operation. Bombay Engraver and then the Calcutta Spray Painter actually. You go there. So click on the home icon and then go there. And then you go to the supply chain execution and then go to the manufacturing work definition now. <coughs> <coughs> the work definition, you go there. You know, <coughs> so I will now go on then manage standard operations. Now. In the plant setup, I'm not going to go for the manage setup. Click on plus. So this is done by the supplier actually. So it is not an in-house operation. Drop down and then make it as an operation as a supplier now. Put the name over here now. And then click on the code. Click on the description. That's it. Work center is A01. Fine. That is my Metros PC assembly shop is a one. So on a supplier one, the count point is always on actually. The remaining things are there. Outside processing item, I'm going to give the engraving item on this one. Click on it. So the engraving item. So actually, if you see this now, fine, both the outside processing items are coming up now. Fine, the engraving item. So if you go on and see this now in this place, I'm sorry. If you go on and see the manufacturing collaboration here, you see. <clears throat> So the PC cabinet has to be shipped and then it will be shipped in the name of only the engraving item actually, right? OSP item only. The cabinet will be shipped to the Bombay engraver only in the name of what? OSP item actually. So that's it. I will that on it. So you want to do that. So it's okay. Supplier is what? Who is the supplier? A01. I will now put the supplier also. The supplier. Engraving supplier. Right? Bombay engraver is the one. The supplier is going to perform this operation of right? the supplier item is coming. And the unit supplier is each. And then if you have each, we cannot do any what's called your uh, lead time management actually. Fine. When it is a time based, we can very well do it. I will now say, okay, fine. I will now say day now. So fixed is one, and then uh, the variable is two now. I will now say I have not worked on the lead times actually. <clears throat> so we will now see whether it comes properly or not. So I know put a reasonable day. So whether it now says after two days, whether it will be ready or not, I know. I will put it just for understanding more than doing it. But I meant to learn this now, this part, the lead time management, I meant to learn it now. Ma so, Manaji, when, when the PO is raised, right? Just uh, take a look at the need by date. Oh, oh, oh based upon the variable data. So yeah. I will now say fixed to plus uh, you are uh, in EBIS. No, just, 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 uh, yeah, just, hmm? yeah, just put it. We'll calculate it there. Uh, you know, three days. Okay. We'll right. the, yeah. You know, coming after three days or not. Okay, fine. He's saying that the uh, the PO need by date will be shifted by three days. That's what you're saying now, Vinayan. I am thinking yes. Okay, okay. He's yeah. thinking it. So I'm not putting it up. Let us not see that because some additional setups may be required for the retail management. I'm not sure about it. So, yeah, yeah. There are uh, there are quite a few additions. Mm, like, yeah, processing, I mean, processing. still missing. <laughs> so, itself, so, it is one topic uh, by itself. 
save and close. Okay. I will now go and then save and close, save and create another one. Okay. Click on save and create another one. The next one, the Bombay engraver outside standard operations now created now with the appropriate suppliers and then the outside closing item actually. And then you now go for the Calcutta one. So make it as a supplier now. <clears throat> we'll go there and then take a copy of it. <clears throat> So it's a A01 collector spray printer. So take a copy of it and go there and then paste it over here. And then the work center is A01. Our Madras assembly shop is a work center. Now. And then our A01, and then the spray painting is the OSP item actually. I will not choose the spray painting. Click on OK now. And then for supply, it is A01. And then we would have then the spray painter now. Click on OK now. And then the units of measure is day now. I will know here fixed and then one there I have given three here I will not give seven no fine we'll not see whether any date shift is happening or not fine otherwise some other setups are required that's it so both the uh, OSP uh, supplier operation types are now done fine click on save and close <clears throat> so we'll now go on and do the remaining two ones also fine so create a work definition basically fine with that and then create a inno standard operation fine with that no inno fine with that so making of the PC cabinet is the inno standard operation fine with that so click on plus now. <clears throat> it is in house now. I paste it over here. Paste it over here. Description. I paste it over here. Okay. The work center is A01. <sighs> what else? Now I will now make it as a count point. Here in EBIS, we can very well do count point and order, order charge also. But here both are mutually exclusive. I meant to learn this now. It is a different way of doing it. Now fine. Count point and order, order automatic transfer are mutually exclusive. Uh, because there you have count point, auto charge, and backflush. But here they are mutually exclusive. I meant to learn this now. And then I will now add the resource. So for the first operation, if you see, <coughs> I need a vendor now. For making this one first tenth operation, I need a vendor actually. So I'll now go on and add the vendor actually. A01. I have got two roses only. One the vendor and then one can there. A01. And click on search now. Oh god, I have made a mistake here. So I have to first of all associate my resource to my <coughs> Department actually. So you go there, you go to the manager work centers and then you get associate the resources over here now. Select it and then here go there, edit it. Add the resources over here. And click on plus one. So these are resources which are available now. The A01 is a vendor builder. <laughs> so it's what the default unit is, is the capacity. Capacity planning will be using it now. Fine. Available 24 hours check capability promise. And they are all used by the planning modules now. Fine. Add another now. And now add another. You go to A01, and then you would have no, this is basically the assembler. I'm adding it now. So, available, and then click on it. So, it's again capacity planning. And you click on OK. So, these two are added to my assembly shop in Madras now. And click on seven close. Now, we can very well get the standard operation. So, click on that now. So, let's now go there and then get the, the remaining balance to standard operations, manage standard operations, and then click on plus now. Okay. So, go there. So, and go there. So making of the PC cabinet is a standard operation. In house operation now, fine. Code it, code it, code it, code it, go there. Count point is on now. So work center is A01. Madras assembly shop. Madras PC assembly shop. And click on plus one. And then here, if you go there, A01, A wa if you not come. So it is basically a vendor vendor kind of that. So the first standard operation is not done. Kind of that moment. So click on save and close by which it is not done now. Scheduling is no because I have not enabled the time management this time. to learn it now. I would have done it also. The costing and lead time management, I will now learn it later on and then I will show you. The final operation, the final standard operations is now my stuffing the cabinet as motherboard. The code with the description now find go there is the A01 and then you would have the assembly shop. And click on plus one. And then I will now add the assembler on this one. A01. The assembler is there. Okay, okay. That's it. So go there. Click on save and close by which what happens? All the four standard operations are now created. Um, Nanaji, make it scheduled. Uh, otherwise, it will not calculate the lead oh, time. Okay. It will not. Uh, it will not calculate. Okay, very good. Very good. No? Yeah, because what happens is uh, based on your uh, usage hours, right? Ah. Uh, it will calculate the lead time based on your usage hours. Okay, okay. How many hours you are? Schedule is yes. No, my brother. Yeah, making yes. the schedule. schedule is yes. So, so yes, otherwise, what? Forgot yeah. The yes otherwise, yeah. Mm, whatever you're given as a three and seven days, they will not be reflecting on this one. Yes, okay, fine. Okay, any other mistakes, fine. So, scheduling is yes, no, on the PC, making of the PC cabinet, fine. Click on save and close now. Ah, you cannot enable the resource schedule indicator if the resource usage unit submitted is not time based. Come on. And, uh, okay, uh, no, you have to make it uh, okay. This is right, each. 
so this will be ours ours i mean otherwise yeah yeah, yeah usually resource is based on consumption yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so i should have made the vendor as ours no I, not each actually fine there is a mistake so i cannot yeah. make it yeah. so that is a lab access for you scheduling is a lab access for you so i yeah. schedule it actually fine whatever you want oh god i made the mistake <clears throat> so i not done it now what i can do so i have not made it as what uh, a01 making of the uh, thing and then what happens uh, one more option what is the option here uh, making of the pc cabinet no fine making of the pc cabinet is a01 and then another was stuffing the cabinet this also i had to change with the name of a01 i made a change on this one the name is changed actually this also is so all the a01s are coming up all the four standard operations are ready actually good now let me go and then create a work definition so for the cabinet so the cabinet is having a bill on the child also it is common actually so we will now go the and then create a what's called a work definition so we are going to create a work definition fine go that click on it so we have completed all this plan setups operations now we go to the work definition area click on the manage work definition and let me get a work definition i'm going to create a work definition box so click on click on plus now i'm going to get a work definition so item is what this is item and give a tab now so once when you give a tab the primary is coming fine drop it down and then make a change we can even have multiple work definitions i'll now make it as a main now that's it i click on next <clears throat> so i will now add the operation fine go that click on it i now add the operation again now operation is what a01 so in the first one is what it is basically okay uh, bombay engraver making on the pc cabinet what about the third one the internal one is not coming the fourth one has to come now there is a mistake now. <clears throat> the stuffing there is a mistake now find that you know the standard operations are not i will not go there go back and then i will not click on done now close it done then i will not query that one some standard operations not coming properly actually <clears throat> the final one is not coming so you go there go to the manage standard operations and query for the a01 now a01 entry now so the stuffing of the cabinet with the motherboard is not coming there now and count point is not on oh god that is because of this now <clears throat> it is a inos operation the count point is not on so that may be the reason why they're not getting gist at all you can even see this place now fine <clears throat> there's a only difference now these two are supplier operations and then this one i'm not sure about whether this is a mistake or not fine so made the count point is on fine nana ji nana ji final operation should always have count point otherwise okay, the, okay. Think, that is no, no. but even it is not coming the list of values at all fine. That's okay. Fine. Oh, okay. Not the count point. That's okay. But it was not coming the list of values also. Okay. Now all the four are there. Mm. Proper one. Mm. So click on plus one point. Oh, okay. Take okay. a thing. So you say that uh, whichever is having a count point only will be listed on the standard operation. That is what it looks so. Like. Click on drop it down, and then make it as a main now, and then click on next. <clears throat> click on plus one. So if you give a zero one, I want four. Now the one now. I won't have four. All the four. Only three are coming here. I don't, I don't know why this is there. Only the, and then making of the assembly, making of the PC cabinet is coming, but stuffing, making of the PC cabinet is okay. Uh, making the final is stuffing. Now stuffing is not coming at all. No stuffing. Why you have used the resource, right? Is that resource assigned uh, to this? Uh, uh, what is the mistake there? But uh, this no. Mistake there. We now again go to the standard operation, the stuffing, and then have a look at it now. Manage standard operations, and then query for the A zero one now. Enter it now. So we are all in those only. Stuffing is not coming. Why? Come on, somebody tell me. What is the mistake here now? This is variable usage and everything is there. Oh God, charge type must be automatic. I think it must be automatic. I think so. Not sure about it. The charge type must be automatic. Any other mistakes visible here now? Uh, the standard operations not. Oh, oh. save and close. Charge type. Uh, charge type should not. Affect. Making of the cabinet. Can you show? Uh, here it is automatic. That was manual. No. <clears throat> okay. Let us try. Mm, let us try. So, was a mistake or not? Was it? What are the management definitions? I'll click on plus now. <clears throat> so since I don't know manufacturing fully, I know something here and there actually. <laughs> so with my hot knowledge, I'm teaching it to you. Click on 
Thanks a lot. I want all the four. Come on, all the four. So keep on it. A zero one, and then you tap. Oh, still is not coming. Let me make a new one now. Right? Then you know, see this. Sir, uh, see the resource uh, inside that standard operation. Just oh. let us see the resource one. Because charge type, see, charge type is when the resource is getting charged. So you can charge it yourself, or when you complete the operation, it will get charged automatically. That is automatic and manual. Uh, that should not affect. Otherwise, you will get, you will not uh, consume. Yes, you want properly or not. I have another doubt also. That uh, A01, the name may be. The resource is there. The resource type you are saying that it cannot be automatic or something like that you are saying, no? No, no, charge type I was referring to. That should not matter. Mm. Uh, but uh, mm. no, no, uh, the, uh, the variable, uh, variable, okay. okay. Uh, can you show the resource one, the resource definition? Mm. The resource definition, huh? Resource definition. Assembler. Uh, I'm just thinking. Oh. When you make some small mistakes here and there, I'm about you finding it very difficult. Let me query the resource now. Enter it. There's no assembler. No? Uh, costing enabled is not enabled. Class is not required. No, there is a labor. Instance is not required. Sir, make one instance. Uh, no, no, no. Instance uh, is not required. Instance is required only for your uh, capacity manager. Uh, not a requirement. No, instance is not required here. Yeah. I'm thinking. Let me do one thing. Let me create one. Costing, uh, costing enabled. Uh, costing enabled. No, let me create one more standard operation. Something has gone wrong on this one. No, no, the resource did not have costing enabled. No, it doesn't matter. Uh, costing is not required because uh, I'm not going to do any costing at all. A01 stuffing. Okay. Stuffing, I'm making it now. It covered another code now. Description and bidding it up and work center is A01. Click on plus that resource is A01. One resource can be used in multiple standard operations, no problem at all. Okay, okay. I'll now make it as automatic. <coughs> on point is on now. Maybe this may be the okay. It doesn't matter because it has to come on. He knows operation now. Click on second close. So click on done now. <clears throat> we'll now go there, click on it. And then you go to the what's called the manage work definitions. This time, if it doesn't come, I will not put something else. Okay? Because that fourth operation is not an important operation for us, now, actually. <clears throat> A01 is a PC cabinet. So I'll go to the PC cabinet. There's an FG for me now, which we are not getting it. Drop it down. I'll make it as a main now. Okay, click on next. On plus one and a zero one when you attack the stuffing is coming. What a mistake! Yeah. Is I don't know. <laughs> so, first is what making of the PC cabinet. Use it now. Can't click on it. So, go there. So, we have done the making of the PC cabinet. So, go there. So, once when it is made, next is what engraving operation. So, for which we have to ship the PC cabinet. So, we have to do the create shift and action. Click on plus <clears throat> and then drop it down. Is A zero one in the tab, and then here what's called what's called a Bombay engraver is a standard operation in which we are going to ship the product also. Can click on it. It is a supplier operation. Go there. So generate shipment must be on on the Bombay engraver actually. It is a reference one. Reference ones are standard operations actually. So generate shipment must be on actually. Whereas for the next operation, the generate shipment should not be on because we are not going to ship it to the Calcutta man. <clears throat> the Bombay is going to ship it. Now. So generate shipment, if you make it as on, the work order will not throw an error. I will not show you the error also. The work order is going to throw an error. So click on plus now. I will not go for the 30th operation. So here, I will minimize it now. So here it is the A01 and then your tab now. And here is what is called Calcutta spray paint. So I will now keep it on and then I will not show it. This is not applicable at all for this. So here we are not going to ship anything. He is shipping it. In case if you are going to ship anything, then we have to make it on. <clears throat> if you are going to ship something to him, then we are on. 
if I am not going to ship anything, then what happens? It should be off. Let us now keep the error as such now, and then click on plus now, and then I will not do the stuffing. <coughs> now it will not throw an error against you. So if you go on that, what happens? I click on save and edit. This third operation has got a wrong create shipment. When click on save and edit, it will not throw an error. You must set the generate shipment attribute to know for the supplier operation correct action. So here, since he, he is only shipping it, and I don't know if we have to ship it, I don't know how to do it. If we have to ship it to this guy also, something, some items. How to do it, I don't know. So that somebody please teach me. Now, only this guy can only ship. You have to them. break the operation. Uh, maybe, maybe. Nanaji, you have to break the operation. We had this requirement. Uh, so what we do in that case is, uh, uh, this guy will ship it to the Calcutta. Okay. And uh, we'll break the operation and provide another. Uh, another intermediate no, operation there. We will be Intermediate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that will be supplying only material to you. Maybe, maybe. Yes, that is only supplying material. Okay. Then it will allow. Operation has to be there. That will now supply yeah. material to you. Fine. So again, yeah. you have to study the customers one and then do it now. Fine. Again, contact Avin and then you will be able to help you out on this now. Fine. You are not showing error. So let me go on and edit it now. So in the same one, only one shipment is possible on this. Otherwise, what happens? It should not be a standard operation like this. It should not be a supplier operation actually. In a supplier operation, only one is allowed. And then on this place, what happens if you go there? On the 30th one, if you go and then see this now, fine. click on generate shipment and remove it. So I remove it. So generate shipment on the Calcutta supplier has been removed now. We, are, we cannot ship it. Fine. Only one shipment is possible. And if you have it, we have to break one. We are inside one more operation only for supply of material actually. Got it now, fine. So all the four operations are now done. Fine, click on save and close. Now it will not save. Click on save and close. It will not go to the next level now. So in the next level, what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate the material to the bill actually. Or to the operations actually. 10, 20, 30, and 40. On the 10th one, we need the sheet metal and then the final one, we need the motherboard and RAM actually. So we'll not uh, uh, do those things at the appropriate place actually. Fine. So every standard operation has got what the resources already associated now. Fine, that one. So the 10th operation, the maker of the PC cabinet, this whatever, we need the sheet metal to be supplied. Fine. Click on it, drag it, and then drop it down. Fine. Click on it, drag it, and then drop it down on the last one. Fine. It gets added on. You can see item and then the resource is coming. The resource is a vendor resource, and then the item is a sheet metal resource. The 20th and 30th operation are supplier operations, and though nothing is required. On the fourth one, we need the motherboard. And click on it and then drag it over here. And that's it. The bill and routing are fully created, actually. <clears throat> item and resources are coming. Fine. The motherboard and then the RAM, and then there's the assembler. Fine. They don't have any resources. So click on save and close. Any doubt on this now? I'm going to save and close now. <clears throat> So the four operations are having, the first and fourth operations are having items and resources. The second and third are supplier operations. So, so click on save and close by which, what happens? We are now complete the bill and routing for this. Bill and routing. And remember, when you have to supply materials to the Calcutta spray painter also, as Abhinandan was saying, we have to add one more intermediate operation in which that will be supplying only material, nothing else. Material only will be supplied. So that way you are doing. So this is not done. You can go click on it. And then go to the manager. Find that one. Now we are now going to create a what's called a OSP blanket agreement for the spray painter only, and not for the first one. So we will now go there. I will not take up the item. So this is the item now. So if you go on and try to create a BPA for this now, fine, it will not work at all. Fine, click on it. And then go there. I will not go to the procurement. And then I will not go to the purchase orders. I will not create a agreement now. Fine, click on it. Now. I will not go on and create agreement now. Management. So, uh, not manage them, I have to go to create agreement. Actually. Click on plus one. I'm click on it. I'm not going to create agreement. <clears throat> so, supplier is A01, the spray painter actually. So, I will not put the spray painter over here. I click on it. <clears throat> and then I click on create. No, I'm not creating it. Now, item will not appear on the BP at all. It is because the styles are not matching actually. So, we have to have no friends that you want. I will not give a plus and then try to put the item. Item will not appear at all. Is the item over here? Then you have to have no item will not appear at all. There is no such item because this is the OSP item, whereas the BPA is not a OSP BP. <clears throat> so here, what you have to do is we have to go there. You go to management document. Nanaji, the 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 thing is uh, the item will not come because you are charging the supplier for the services. No, no, not no, not, 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 no, no. I will come here. I come here. Manage document style. So I will go there. So I'll not go to the management document states because 
The BPA does not allow the standard style. If you go there, if you want the standard style, if you go and see. So for the BPA, the name is what? The blanket purchase agreement. And then here, outside processing is not enabled. Okay. okay. Now we have a standard one available here. Now we have one more style called outside processing style. Now click on it. So here, the outside processing is enabled. Process. <clears throat> so I will now say display name is what? I will now make a change now. Find data OSP <coughs> BPA. <coughs> so we have to use only this now. If you use this, OSP is enabled, item will be coming now. OSP is enabled. Click on save and close now. So we are now modified the outside processing oh, style oh, with okay. our name only. Now you go there and then create ours. You go to the procurement and then you go to the purchase orders and then go to the manage agreements now. So click on it. So now go and get the manage agreements. So click on the manage agreements. <clears throat> so click on plus now. Now I will not drop down and then choose the Tata OSP now. Come on, it is not coming. Why is it not coming here? I made a change now. Huh? Not listed at all. Maybe you had a save and close on no, no, see that. Sometimes what happens is a lot of login will now help you out. Now. Otherwise, we have to run the LDAP also. LDAP will now sync all the processes basically. Something or other is missing on this now. Otherwise, it will come. <clears throat> the Tata OSP has to come now. And have to come. Go to the procurement and then you go to the what's called purchase orders and then you go and then create a man. Click on it. You go there, go to the create agreement. Come on, drop it down. Tata, come on, come on. It is not coming. Can click on search and then search for it now. Style is okay. Style is what Tata. Click on search. It is not coming at all. Oh God, I don't know. So I will now use the outside closing. Maybe we are, it will take some time or you have to run the syncing process now. Fine. Outside closing blanket agreement and choosing it. Supplier is A01. Now our item will come. So first is what outside closing supplier item. For the second only I'm making it for the first one. I am not making it. For the second one, I'm making an automatic uh, BP automatic route of uh, creating a purchase order. Not the one. So first one, I'm going to manually create it. And one person. So the item is what? I'm not paste it and then see. No item will come. Previously, item was not coming because it's not a OSP <coughs> BP actually. So click on it. So you want us go there. So the price on the item will be defaulting over here now. It's not defaulting. I will put some more. Click on it. That's it. I go there. on it. And then I go to the controls. The controls are usual actually. Fine. It is all fully explained on my purchasing training actually. So go there. <clears throat> so we have this thing. This is for the multi org access control. Okay, fine. Go there. Click on everything is okay. This is for the procurement contracts. We can even add the contract over here now. And then five two two seven two. Let me go there. I will not put what I was looking at. Is that five two two seven two? Is the BPA. Go oh, there and then click on submit. I'm going to submit it now. I hope that automatic approval is enabled here now. This place has been submitted for approval now. So go there, click on this, and go to the manage agreements now. Try to do something, it now go and query it. But it is not getting approval. <coughs> 5227 is entering now. So you go there, spending approval. If you click on it, you will see whether it's only the individual guy who has to approve now. In the meantime, I will now go there. I will now see the purchase requisition, whether it has been set to automatic amount. I will have to set them as automatic. So click on search now. The manage. Percentage approval percentage is an entry now. Manage requisition approvals. So here, so many are enabled. Okay, man, look, disabling everything. Many guys are working on it, and so go oh, there, disable it. Disable it. I will now go to the consensus. Nobody would have made anything on this now. I will click on it. I will now choose this and then click on edit rules. <coughs> And then nothing is there for click on plus number. Let us now make one automatic actually. It's automatic. And then uh, the rule always applies. Click on okay. <clears throat> and then add action. 
make it as automatic. So click on key and that's it. And click on save and then deploy it. And then now the requisition is now made automatic now. So I don't know, it doesn't enable it. It's not enabled actually. So now we'll go there and then have a look at our agreement now. And we'll go to that now, open or not. Click on search. This is now done. Now. Where is that? Yeah, and it's a position of the office. Go there. So it is open now. Fine. Purchase order is approved actually. Try to some is approved. Now we will now go to the supplier. Fine. Go the second supplier is no one. Fine. Go there. So here you will be getting the data over here. Fine. The supplier portal. You can now see this now. How to refresh it? Anybody? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to refresh it actually. So let me log out and log in. I don't know how to refresh it actually. Fine. Sign out and sign in now. <coughs> Confirm and then come in now. So that will be getting updated on this one. It's a A01 percentage spray. It's welcome. One, two, three. So click on sign in. So you got agreement opened is one now. Fine. Agreement opened is one. If you click on it, you can also see the agreement only. The second supplier, we have never made agreement. That's it. Five to two seventy is there. Fine. Everything is there. Click on that. And then we'll now enable automatic uh, what's called uh, document creation on this now. Fine. Click on it. Go to this place and then enable the automatic documentation. Fine, click on server and maintenance. And then you know, go to the task configure procurement business function and then enable the automatic documentation. Configure procurement business function. Configure procurement business function. <clears throat> to go there. So the business unit is US1 business unit now. US1 business unit. Now. Click on OK. So we are now going to see whether the automatic. So we have to have the buyer over here now. The buyer is a must actually for this thing. Fine. Buyer is there. Fine. Let it be any buyer, it doesn't matter. Fine. I do not have to be this buyer, it can be anywhere. And then in this place, what happens? Auto generate orders. So these two tick mark, this tick mark and the buyer makes it automatic. Fine. So once when the PR gets created, the PO will be automatically created on this one because we have a BPA in place actually. So click on cancel. And then there is one more concept called touchless buying. There is also fully explained in the training now. Fine. And that's it. Fine. Go that came on. It will now go ahead now. So the OSP blanket purchase agreement is approved. Fine. Ensure the creation of you know, automatic uh, creation of PO is now ensured. No matter Now we are going to get a work order for two quarters. So now we are going to begin our operation. The setups are complete now. Up to step number twenty-two. Any doubts on this now? Fine. All the setups are complete now. Now we are going to get a work order for two quarters. <clears throat> so we'll now go to the home now. So I'll now go to this place. Now. Click on it. <clears throat> Click on it. So let us now create a work order for this. Click on it. No going to get a work order. So I go to the supply chain execution now. Both work definition and work order of work execution is coming. Supply orchestration is also coming. So I go there, go to this place. In this place, what happens? I go there. Go to the work execution now. In the work execution, I am going to create what a work order. Setup setup complete. We go there, click on it. And then in the top, what happens? Go, go to the manage production, manage work orders is the area where I'm going to get a work order. So click on plus now. Let me get a work order for total quantities. So the work order is now getting created for the PC cabinet. A01 and then give a tab now. So it is for the PC cabinet actually. <clears throat> so I will now say PC cabinet. Fine, click on okay. Now. This is finished good. Fine, go that on it. I will now put the quantity as 12 now. So quantity is 12 now. Go that on it. And then save and edit now. I will now bring it to edit now. Fine, click on save and edit. So 12 quantities I'm going to manufacture. Since I have not done some mistake on the scheduling, it will not show you properly. Fine. Otherwise, the scheduling also can be done properly. The resources must be uh, time-based units of is all each actually. And there are some mistakes there. <clears throat> so here, if you go to the operations, we can now see all the four operations over here. <clears throat> the first operation is the 10th operation. The second one is the 20th operation. There is a Bombay engraver. The 30th one is the Kolkata sprayer. And then the 40th one is stuffing actually. So here, if you go there, go to the Bombay engraver and then on the right hand side, you drop it down and then click on the supplier operation details. And click on the supplier option details. It will now show you how it works. Work order quantity, PO requested is nothing, PO operated is nothing, shipped is nothing, received is nothing, fine, whether everything is nothing, nothing, nothing. So let us now, first of all, complete the first operation. The first operation is 10th operation, where we are now going to make the PC now. <clears throat> so here, if you go there, click on the requisition area, fine, click on the mark. So here, we will now make the first operation. So go to this work order. And go there. So here I have to release the work order also. Let us now release the work order. Go to the main area. And then we'll now query the work order now. And work order name is what? Data. And then click on search now. Underscore and then some running number. 
So Tata underscore one zero one two is there. Fine. Select it and then you edit it. It is an unreleased status and make a change to what? Release. I am not releasing it. Now we can very well move it on the shop floor. Shop floor movement is very much possible. The status is released. Fine. Give a save and close. Clear. It's not fine. So this is a manage work order. It's not fine. If you click on the bottom now again, you go back to fine. And then go to the operation now. It is a release status. Fine. The operations is not showing us. Uh, okay, this is not showing us this now. This screen I'm keeping it only for the monitoring of it now. So I will now go to the other one now. And here from this here, what happens? You go there. You go to the supply chain execution, and then you go to the work execution now. <clears throat> and then let us now move it on the shop floor. Go to the review. This here we are creating a work order and then releasing it. Here we are going to move it on the shop floor. Review dispatch list. I click on it. We are going to move it on the shop floor now. So I will now go then query on my PC manufacturing and status is all now. If you don't make it as all, what happens? It won't be showing you now. I will click on, click on search now. Sometimes it will not be showing you. <coughs> Sometimes it is not showing you. Otherwise, what happens? You make it as all now. So expand it and then I'm going to complete the operation number 10. Now. Operation number 10 is ready for it now. Fine. I will now click on complete with the details. I'm now completing the details now. Fine. Click on it. The is a three stage process is a product. And then if you want to add any transaction note, we can add it now. Fine. Just transaction note. <coughs> Something like that. And then add it. And then click on next now. Fine. We are going to backflush the components. For backflushing it, there is no need for us to have the stock at all. Fine. Click on it. So work order quantity is 12 now. Fine. Click on it. So if you want to add any extra components also, we can even add it and do it now. You can even scan the components also and do it now. And then go there one. And then uh, here, uh, if you give a plus complete as it is on this now, fine, uh, for uh, if you click on plus, it's only an additional component, I think now, and not for the standard components actually. So click on next now. You go to the transact. <coughs> Backflush is for supply of material, and then tran uh, auto transact is for the charging of the resources actually. Fine. If you have a resource instance, so, uh, Nanaji, uh, backflush material. So you have given the width supply type as put. Yeah. Right. Oh, that means what we have to manually add, huh? Yes, yes, yes. Push oh. means you have to manually do with push. Plus and pull push. means you have to it will automatically pull. Back. Okay, okay. You put the yeah. pull, it will automatically pull. He's saying that I have to manually push only, otherwise it will not get added at all. Uh, otherwise, it will not get with push. Oh, oh, oh. The, yeah. So here the sheet metal has to be manually added. So since the type is push, he's saying that we had to manually add it now. Fine, transact one for each now. It is for each now, fine. <clears throat> It is for each one or uh, yes, yes, yes. One. yes. Uh, so you are doing. Uh, mm -hmm. So you are given twelve. Uh, yeah, twelve is uh, right? one, and then here I had to say only transact is only one, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> okay, let us see. Let us see. No, see is required coming. is uh, why is the required? What order quantity is twelve now? Whether we have to transact also twelve or what? Okay, we will now yeah. transact twelve and then see whether it's getting multiplied by twelve or not. We will now see. So click on next now. Fine. So back flush, it is a push type. You have to manually do it. That's what he's saying now. Fine. You want it. So order transact on the save and close by which what happens? I'm now completing operation number 10. Any other doubts on this now? So click on save and close now. We'll now see how much is issued now. 12 into 12 or only 12. You must see on the back flush here. So since it's a push, we have to, you have to manually push it now. Fine. Yeah. You have completed the quantity of 12 each of operation at 10 for the work order 1052. The next operation is 20 now. Yes, so click on done now. We'll now go to this area and then we'll know how to do it. Operation 10 is completed. Now it is now ready. I will now go to the general information and come back. You will now see that it is completed with the tick mm -hmm. mark over here. Now I click on the general information here now. and then click on the operations area. And then here. So it is completed with the tick mark now. Only 12 is supplied. Yes, very correct. Well, and then, so if you mention 12 means what? It is for uh, the complete operation 10 actually. When 12 is supplied and then here it is also 12 is in order. So the tick mark is now coming. Now, once when this is done, the split operation is automatically gone into in process. So the purchase requisition is now triggered automatically. I, the purchase requisition is triggered. So if you go there down, then have a look at it now. Fine. Go to the supplier operation till the purchase request is now made now. So PO requested is stolen now. Fine. Previously, all these things are Kodi Mutai, Kodi Mutai, Kodi Mutai, 000. Now the PO request is stolen. So let us go there and then have a look at it. What happens? I was listening now. So it is not done. We'll now go and then have a look at our purchase orders now. We'll now go to the procurement. And then here I go to the what's called the purchase orders. I will now go and then query on the processor. And then before which what happens, we can even go and then see the supply orchestration actually. You go to the supply chain execution and then go to the supply orchestration. Here we can now see the purchase requisition is now created on this. So click on it. We'll now go and then query on this now. 
<clears throat> so you'll now go to the supply orchestration and click on it now. Go to the managed supply lines and then you're going to create. So we are now into the 20th operation, which whatever the purchase requisition is now created now. And go there. So item equals or item starts with, I will now say A01, and then we tab now and make a search. So you can now see there is one supply order is now created, the buy operation. Fine. You click on the supply order number. You can now see a purchase requisition is now created for this. <coughs> because 10th operation upon completion, the system creates the purchase requisition. It takes a longer time for updation. Actually, fine, well, there's no problem. Good, good, good. It will come very fast. So purchase document by purchase order by then the work order closure. So it's not done. If you click on the execution documents, you can now see the purchase requisition number is also there. So the purchase requisition number 204083 is the purchase requisition number. Now let us now convert it into a purchase order. I will now go there. Right click on the duplicate now. Fine, let me duplicate it now. And then let me convert this purchase requisition into a purchase order. I will not go to the purchase order. Anymore. I will not go to the process requisition and then convert it into a purchase order. Click on the process requisition. So click on. So now uh, for the second one, the purchase order is now getting created for him to do this activity actually. The process requisition is there. So what are the requisition number? 204083 is the one. So 204. 083 is the one. And then uh, we can even say the buyer has a on search now. <clears throat> buyer, you should not mention actually, but don't mention the matter. Otherwise, what happens? If you don't be giving, make the buyer as a blank and then make a search now. 204 uh, 083 is the requisition number. Yeah, getting it and then you're having a blue icon over there. If you go near it, it's now saying this is an outside processing transaction actually. So select it and then click on add to document builder. It'll be adding it. Now, it will be creating an outside processing purchase order, remember, not a normal purchase order. The style should not be normal purchase order. It should be a OSP purchase order now. Fine, drop it down and then make a change. So, oh God, it is not there. Configured order purchase order is there. Fine, click on search. Maybe the purchase order itself may be enabled. Now you see the Tata OSP BBA is coming here. Fine, I am coming. Maybe the purchase order itself may be having the OSP enabled actually. Fine, go click on it. I know you okay. So this is on the Bombay engraver actually. So click on site now. Find that click on okay. There is no source agreement at all because the document style does not support purchasing of outside processing item. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no. There was uh, there was a search option. Uh, okay, in the search yeah, see there any outside yeah, processing? I there. think. O U T, and then make a search now. Find. I thought that the purchase order itself will be coming. Oh God, is not there at all. <laughs> so click on blank search now. Configure order, purchase order, document style for procurement, configure order, find order, deliverable service order, purchase order. Oh God, why is not there? So it is not accepting it now. So the item is okay. We'll now give a cancel now and go there. We'll now, uh, there may be some uh, setups, maybe missing it. And again, go to the manage styles, manage document styles now. So for setup and maintenance. So click on it. <clears throat> so click on search, manage document styles, manage percentage, doc percentage, just by ng percentage. You now see any outside processing purchase orders there or not. Configured order, consigned purchasing style is there. Fourth one. The outside processing style, you will now see if the purchase order is there or not. So outside processing is enabled, the BPA is there, contract is there. Purchase order display is what? Okay, I had to use only this one. I made a mistake on this. Uh, point. <laughs> it is not an OSP BPA. It is actually OSP PO actually. That is a mistake. Because I, I thought that I was making here. Instead of making it, I have made it here actually. Got it now fine. I made a mistake here. I should have made the naming. I should have made it here. Now. And then I made it on the one. Okay, this is the one. Tata OSP PO is the one. Fine. I made a mistake there. Before this, what happened? Got it now? Are you able to understand now? Yeah, yeah. Select it now, find that you know, add to the home builder now. I will not add that to you. I was thinking that I have made it there now, find that point. So I will not say what happens. Uh, Tata OSP PPA is still coming, but uh, the name is not a change. Okay, find that. that is, <clears throat> click on okay. It's only P word. Now it will accept. Find that point. You go down on the bottom and then you create it. Now the purchase order is created actually. The purchase order is now created. 
It is actually Tata ODSP PO only. I have not changed the name. I have to log out and log in and then do it now. But the functionality is okay. That is why the name change, it will not be reflecting properly. It doesn't matter. So the PO is created actually. And then I will not submit properly because I only made it as automatic actually. So document 164059. 164059. So once when the PO is created, you can now see on the supplier operation details that this will be updated actually. So now what I have to do is I have to ship the product. <coughs> Go there. I have to ship the cabinet to the Bombay. So the create different variable now. So we are doing. It. So we have to pick and then ship now. So if you see the picking and shipping process now, in order management. The pick release process is now going to create a pick wave moment, moment request and then it will now confirm the picks. And then finally, you have to ship confirm. <laughs> Since our item is a logical item, this gets automatically staged. Ours is what? Engraving item. Our item is an engraving item which contains the cabinet actually. So we are going to ship only the engraving item and not the PC cabinet actually. So engraving item is what's called logical item. So there is no need to do this process. You can see in the shipment, it is already staged actually. The pick PR and the PC, the pick release and the pick confirmation process is not required for the logical item. So you can now see this is now getting completed. You only have to ship it. You only have to ship it. So let us now go and then query our item on this place. Any doubts on this now? Go there. So it is not done now. So process requisition is not completed. We'll now go there and then look at the purchase order. What is the stage of this now? Fine, manage orders now. So what is the number now? 164059. 164059 is the one, and then click on search now. Search for it. Is the guy who has made it is open. Good. So the purchase order is now made now. And we can see the update on this manage supply lines actually. Where is it here? Supply operation. In this place, we give it done and then come out of it now. Now the PO approved will be coming on this now. We'll click on it. Now again go there and then click on the supplier operation details. You can now see the approved PO line will be coming. PO operator is now there. So the PO number is also appearing over there. Nothing is shipped and then nothing is received actually. <coughs> so now we are going to ship it. We are going to ship it. So we are going to begin the shipping now. Any doubts? So we are now beginning the shipping. Not done. So let us go there. You go, click on the home icon. And then here I go to the what's called supply chain execution. And then I go to the inventory management. And then I'm going to ship the product to the supplier actually. Ship the PC cabinet in the form of an engraving uh, OSP item actually. Click on it now. And then here, once the purchase order is made on this place, fine, go there. created. If you refresh it, you can now see the purchase order number also. Yes, purchase order number is also. So the supply orchestration, you can now see one more line is added on this. Fine, the purchase order number is also. Now we go there in this place. What happens? We go in the inventory management, we go there. Are there any shipping documents for the OSP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shipping documents of OSP is very important. You go to the, the logo of the shipments. And then here, I will now go to the manage shipment events. And then what is the work order number here? Tata underscore, what is the number anybody remember? 1052. Okay, Tata underscore 1052. 1052. Oh, this is the uh, memory now, fine. I'll we'll now make a search now, fine. He's saying 1052, we'll now see whether it's correct or not. I will test it now, fine. The order number, I'm going to put it on the query, manage shipment lines. <clears throat> so go there, click on it. <clears throat> So we are querying on the work order number on the managed shipment lines. Why is not coming here? Not underscore one zero two one zero five two is very correct actually. Uh, then what is the mistake here? Now? Click on it. Managed shipment. Now oh, it's coming. It came. It came. It took some time actually. It's very correct. I mean, then it's very correct now. Fine. Now you can see it is already staged actually. <clears throat> So the PR process is now complete because it is a logical item and then there is no need to pick and then uh, what happens to confirm it. Pick release and pick confirmation is completed. So it's no state. You only have to do the ship confirmation process. <coughs> the only thing which is really not, really not. So click on auto create shipment by which what happens? I'm not creating a shipment now. The shipment number will be created now. Shipment number. So the shipment number is what? 64195. 64195, the shipment number, so it will go there and then click on it and then perform the ship confirmation. So we are going to perform the ship confirmation. And then once when you ship it, it will now update on the inquiry on the supply lines that what happens is also shipped actually in this place. You see, 
then the shipment line will also be popped in if you refresh now. If you can refresh now. I will not create the shipment, but only when you ship confirm it, it will now say whether it is shipped or not. <clears throat> not a ship now. You go to this place. Where is it here? So 6415195. So I will now select the line and then click on the ship confirmation at the top. I click on ship confirmation. I am now ship confirming the product to the supplier actually. Remember, this is a logical item. I'm shipping it, but the physical item only is going to go there. It is now ship confirmed. I will now give a save and close. Fine, the line is shipped actually. So now if you go there and then click on it and then refresh it now. Fine, click on refresh it. Now, fine. The shipping document number will be coming. Come on, it has to come. It takes some time now. Maybe the interface has to run now. Fine. Maybe run. Uh, yeah, it is running now. It'll run in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to run now. Fine. So let us now go on and have a look at the what's called the interfaces actually. So go to the place and then go to the tools <clears throat> and then have a look at the schedule process. The interfaces will be running. The managed shipment interface, since shipment interface is not running up. Fine. So once when this completes, I think that will be updating on the uh, area, work order area actually. Since shipment advice is not running. So it has to send the advices to the what's called the source system actually, in which case is the work order. <coughs> Send shipment advice there. So we are now shipping it to the supplier actually. The engraving item, we are shipping it, but physically we are supplying the cabinet actually. So once when it is completed, send shipment advice is running, then the printing of the pick slips as well as the bill of lading will be running. So, so this process is not there in. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, Print bill of lading and then this is already completed now. Fine, go there, click on it. So I will now go to the print picking, packing slip report and then the bill of lading. We have to print and then give it to the driver actually. Yeah, this process is not there in Ibiza. No, uh, this shipping no. process is not there. We have to do customize. Oh, ho, ho. so here it is. R, I think R12 to 9, I think should have, sir. Uh -huh. 9, they have not given this complete thing. Okay. I'm only okay. generating the problem. For return to vendor, it is there. I don't know. Uh, return to vendor, it will be there. Because yeah, yeah. What happens is here you can generate a shipping document, right? But the problem the bill of lading report is there, is, but it is not giving me any output at all. Fine. Maybe it may be coming the top or what? You have to go to receiving parameters and enable that, sir. Receiving parameter, what you had to enable now? Uh, shipping documents. Oh, 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 oh. The drop ship. Oh, there oh. are checkboxes are there, sir. Oh, oh, oh. I will not go there. I will have a look at the manage receiving parameters actually. <clears throat> Click on it. Click on server maintenance. And then you go there. You go to this place and then click on search now. Manage receiving parameters. <clears throat> yeah, there are tech marks. I know that manage receiving parameters. You want to check for the 002 or oh, no, okay. Oh god, nothing is enabled. Print shipping documents is not enabled. And then uh, print shipping documents for return supplies. Documents. Okay, this has to be enabled actually. This is not enabled actually. <clears throat> but dropship orders is okay. Print receipt traveler. Okay. So no, I'm no enabling certain things now. Then on game one and how about the monitor process? The output is not coming here at all. Send shipment is still coming now. Packing slip report is not having any output now. I've seen it. It used to come now. We'll now see the log and then how to look at it now. And output is not coming as a printable form. Let us now see manage. I know how to look at the log now. You can save now. <coughs> this is long a beautiful document actually. Ah, it is not coming. See what is coming. So click on republish now. And it takes some time, I think. It takes some time. Go there, export to PDF now. So click on save. Bill of lading report. I'm going to open it up and see. See, it is now going to go from Atlanta to the Bombay engraver actually. I know that. Bill of lading is a very important document because on the road, they have to show it to the police. Now. They ask for it. The home is unpacked. Over the weight volume, everything is there now. So from Atlanta to Bombay engraver is going now. So this will be basically this form format will be customized by the technical team actually. The technical team will be customizing the format and then uh, they'll be making the appropriate one based upon the country specific legislations actually. 
So the bill of lading is there. Thank you very much. Similarly, the print pick slip report also will be coming now. Sometimes it's not taking a long time, it doesn't matter. So that is what it is. <clears throat> the monitor process, if you go there. So if you go to the uh, print bill of lading is okay. Print pick slip report. If you go there. Uh, it is not, it is also not. I cannot report it. <clears throat> I'm not going to click on it. And I'm going to export the PDF now. So go there, click on save now. Packing slip. I'm not going to have a look at it. Again, it says what is the item or the description now. I'm going to click on it. What is the quantity? <coughs> all these things. Fine. This all be customized. Ship from is there, ship to is Bombay engraver. The shipment number is also coming over here. Now. This is the packing slip actually. So the packing slip is also there, not on the vacuum monitor. So it gives you every information. So, so these two things has to be printed and then handed over to the lorry driver before he leaves the Madras office, actually. <coughs> now it has gone, fine, the vacuum monitor. Now the PO is now done, and then the shipping document is also come now. And we'll now see the shipping document over here now. Let us now have a look at the shipping document. <coughs> Close it now. So let us go there and then have a look at it. So go to this place. Now the shipping document has to come fine. Click on refresh now. Fine, you'll now see the shipping document. Yes, it's not. It's now ship 6409. Now the supplier is now engraving it. So once when he completes it, he will now make a ASM <coughs> and then ship it to Calcutta directly. So we will now create a ASM from the supplier's office. So here we are now shipped it to this place. Now he has engraved it, and then he will now make a ASM and then send it to Calcutta directly. So there is no shipping involved from our side at all for this operation. So let us now make a ASN for this A1. Click on it. So in this place, what am I the bus one? So go there. I will now click on create ASN. Now this guy is now creating ASN that he has completed it. We'll now query on the purchase order number now. He is now going to query on the purchase order number. 164059 is the one. <coughs> 164059 is the one. He will now query for it now. Click on search now. He's searching for it. And then he'll now create ASN. And select and then click on create ASN. So he will now say he is an engraver now. Find ENG engraver underscore ASN underscore uh, zero zero one now. <coughs> engraver <coughs> engraver ASN. Okay. So the freight terms is what who pays the fines and all. Fine. It is only for AP team to coordinate actually. So cash on delivery. And then the shipment method he will now choose one of them. How he is shipping it now? Fine. FedEx is now shipping it now. Number of packing units is three. And then the bill of lading uh, is one. The variable number is two. And something like that. The packing slip number is four. The packing code <coughs> one, two, three, four. Like that. He's not filling up everything. <coughs> he will now say 12 quantities over here now. <coughs> That's it. And then click on submit. So ENG ASN 001. So once when he creates a ASN, that means what it is shipped, and then the operation gets completed now. Properly. Upon this, the operation gets completed. Once when the ASN is created, there is no need for us to perform any activity in our side at all. Remember. In no place, we don't have to do anything at all. Operation 20 gets completed upon ASN creation itself now. ASN creation itself, the operation gets completed now. I go there, click on it, and then click on submit. ENG ASN 01 for toll quantities, when click on submit. So the first supplier is now creating it. So the operation of shipping gets completed, and then operation 20 gets completed now. So click on submit now. So this activity is now getting completed. He himself can see how much has been shipped now. So this can be seen by him now. On the supply portal. <clears throat> so we are submitting the ASM from the supplier side now. Supplier is now submitting. So was created for number of items. Is one now. Click on it. So go there, click on it. And then uh, here you can even click on the what's called how to have a look at it here. And click on done now. We can now go to the manage ASMs and have a look at it. Or I forgot that actually. <clears throat> we go there. Uh, we can even have a look at the A's and actually manage shipments. I'll now go to the manage shipments. In the shipments, we'll now go to the manage shipment. Fine. It's a ENG. And then click on search now. Engraving A's and one now. And then here, you will now click on the underline of this now. Fine. Click on this now. Fine. You know, the shipping method is now. But that's, and go there. Click on it. So shipped is 12. <clears throat> and line status is fully received by the Calcutta. The Calcutta man has fully received it also. <clears throat> So he has shipped it and then the Calcutta has now fully received it. Only upon this, he has to make it now. Fine. Only when he has to physically ship it, get a telephonic confirmation from Calcutta man. And then afterwards, he has to create an ASN and then complete it. Because upon completion, Operation 20 gets completed actually in our system. 
in the tournament. So we'll not go there and have a look at it. You know, what I was, you'll not see the received is also tall, it will be coming. So if you go to the receiving details, received is a Calcutta man, click on refresh now, point. Calcutta man has received it, so it is now coming. 60051, that is the number or what? That is the number, yeah, 60051. View details, find out, click on the view details. Point. But 60051, I don't know where is the number. <clears throat> it is fully received actually. And click on cancel. Maybe somewhere it will be there actually. I don't know. Click on cancel. 60051 is the one. <clears throat> it will be visible here also. I know that. There will be on some transaction details are there, right? which you can very well see it. I'm going to go to the manage shipments. And then if you make a search now on the shipment number, if you click on it, click on the shipment number. Somewhere you have to click. And then here you can see the transaction details somewhere here now. Click on the view details. I have seen it now. When actions and then go to view details. Somewhere I have seen it actually. <clears throat> so that number is visible. I am not able to. I forgot that actually. And somewhere you can see very well the transaction details actually. The transaction details will now show you the shipment number also. Okay. So click on it. Now it is now fully visible. Visible is full. So <clears throat> PO requested as well. Approved as well. Visible is 12. Shipped is also 12. Everything is not done. So operation 20 gets completed. Fine, click on done now. So once when you done and then come out of it, you can now see a tick mark will be coming on this and then the status will be completed. You go back to general information then come back here now. So go to general information and then click on the operation now. <clears throat> now you can see the tick mark has come, the complete list come. Clear? Anybody can say yes? You are clear now? Hello? Anybody is there? Yes. Sir. Okay, good. Now the uh, 30th uh, operation is... Uh, tell me, yeah. Yeah, only one thing, just, uh, just for you. Uh, because what happens is you can use it for, but uh, two might get two. Two might have got damaged on the way, I see. Hey, your yeah. voice is breaking actually, some problem is there. Yeah. So that situation also happens. Okay. Uh -huh. Then you can either solve. Then how to do that now? Fine. How to account for the two now? Fine. He has to send a return or what? The Calcutta man will be returning back to Bombay with a ASN or what exactly it is? Yeah, 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 they can use an ASN to actually. Oh, Calcutta will now send an ASN back to Bombay, <coughs> back to uh, Bombay. indicating Bombay that the tool is now damaged and then he has to rectify that and then something like that. So, yeah, Abhinandan must have encountered such situations control. also in his uh, project now, basically. So, if you have any questions yeah. or anything, you can contact him now, fine, Saha. <clears throat> you can yeah, contact actually the Calcutta man. <laughs> <laughs> Because what is happening, Nana, is that all the material that you are providing, right, it is uh -huh. actually consigned. Okay. It, the ownership is yours. Oh, oh, oh. they are only handling sort of a consigned material. Usually, yeah. So usually that is the scenario. So you are the owner of the material, uh -huh. but it is housed at the supplier. Okay. So it is housed at the supplier location. Fine. I am the owner. I am the implementing company. I am the owner, and then it is now housed at the supplier's location. Now, yeah. this so, operation is now in process, but we have a BPA in place now. The system will be creating a PO also automatically for the 30th operation. I go there, click on it now. You now see this. <clears throat> there is a PO getting created on this now. Go to supplier operation details on this now. I go there, click on it. So, uh, you know, say PO requested is 12, PO approved is also 12 now. Now, there is no shipment at all coming up at the bottom now. The PO number is coming, but there is no shipment at all because no shipment is involved from our side actually. From our side, we are not shipping anything on the OSP route actually. So in this place, you see there is no shipment at all. The PO is created automatically, but nothing is received actually. And then this will be getting updated on the suppliers one now. I know that I'm not, I'm not going to the supplier portal of the second supplier now. I know that agreement, open agreement is one. The PO also would have come now. I know that I know sign out and sign in. I don't know how to refresh the screen actually. I'm signing out and signing in now. Just so like the browser. Oh, oh, browser refreshing is okay. Huh? Mm. Hey, and then it is welcome. One, two, three is the one. I know that you want to click on sign in. I'm signing into the browser now. <clears throat> Avinandan, are you in India? Yeah, in Bangalore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, in Bangalore. Oh, no. He has already given his email. He can talk to you. Orders yeah. open is the now. I click on it. He can have a look at the orders open. Open orders and more. <clears throat> It's okay, fine. Now, this guy also can create what ASN and then what the thirtieth operation gets completed when we create an ASN. Now, I'm not going to create an ASN. I'm now 
the muniyandi vilas i don't even have a computer now so i am going to telephonically inform the madras company that i have completed the spray painting and then i'm shipping it to you so the madras company can make a physical receipt also so you, you make a as and it will be getting completed otherwise what happens this guy now we are we are now going to perform a receipt on behalf of it is a logical receipt actually so we will now perform a logical receipt for the spray painting activity actually <coughs> now go there click on it now. so we are not doing anything so there is another method of doing it so we can also create a asn and then doing it so we already shown the asn route now now i will not show you the physical route will now go and then perform a physical receipt <coughs> so click on cancel now so now i am going to perform a physical receipt thank you for coming over to me i will go there i will now go to what supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management i am going to make a physical receipt of this click on it go there i will now go to this receipts <coughs> and then receive expected shipments and then on the second po number what is the po number for the second one i have written it i have not written it na ah item is there okay fine page zero one this is a spray painting item spray painting or spray item click on search so there will be an order now so i am going to make a physical receipt of it the purchase order 164060 click on receive now so this completes the 30th operation on 24th december <clears throat> it will be normally direct delivery because it is a logical receipt only we are going to make it now thank you and then the destination is work order and not inventory actually you can see the destination type is work order it is not inventory and then click on the show receipt only it will show you all the 12 over here now so we are going to receive it as a work order now on the on the assembly shop now. on the pc assembly shop metros pc assembly shop we are going to receive it and not on the inventory actually and then click on create receipt and then click on submit by which order on the 30th operation gets completed so this completes the third operation so the operation can be done by a physical receipt at our place for a work order destination or otherwise an aas and also so i have shown you both the routes of doing it now and that one by aas and then one by a physical receipt into your work order now so i go there and then how to go to manage supplies and then here if you refresh it again the next purchase orders will be coming friends for the spray painting operation is now started <coughs> it will not show you the spray paintings in process awaiting work order so and so so and so so and so find this no point so the supply orchestration will now give you all the information whatever is happening over there in this place whatever is happening all the purchase position purchase order the other documents also will be coming if you click on the second line you can now see the other purchase order number also there <coughs> so supply orchestration is not showing all these things no point that you want and then here the receiving details will be coming you click on refresh no point is now received actually is not received is not delivered so the spray painting operation is not delivered over here now so click on that you will now find a tick mark on this now a tick mark will be coming the state will be getting completed so go to general information and come back it will be coming on the other place and then click on the operation now you don't take the no completed <clears throat> now the 40th operation i am going to do there is a inos operation the 10th operation the 40th operation and inos operation now previously what happens only the 10th operation was showing the 20 and 30 will not show on your what happens your assembly moves actually because they are all external ones now 40th one will be available for you to operate actually so go there you go to this place uh we'll now go there. so here we'll now go there and then we'll now query your work order you'll now go to the dispatch list and then you'll now try to move the final one you go to the supply chain execution now <clears throat> you go to the work execution so click on the work execution and then here you go there click on it and then here have a look at review dispatch list this is the place where we are monitoring it here we are going to perform a assembly move on the shop floor review dispatch list so go there and then go to this place and then click on search now you know coming friend over now the 40th operation is not shown previously 10th was shown now 40th is not shown <coughs> click on it <coughs> i will now perform a quick complete now <coughs> now uh, avinandan was saying that since the operation type is a push the material may not be charged because we have to explicitly charge i don't know what will happen now when you perform a quick complete on a complete utilities we have done it now fine we'll now see what happens on this now I click on quick complete now in the quick complete whether it takes up automatically or not you have completed the quantity 12 operation at operation 40 to submitary completed of the work order so on so on the work order gets completed i think that you want it no no sir uh, push uh, push or pull is complete yeah but it was uh, push na i'm not sure about it you see whether i'll not no, 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 your voice is breaking here see it's completed 
the resources are charged and then this is not charged at all maybe quick complete may not charge we have to manually push it again push means what a manual push is required so the component is not consumed by this operation because yeah, the component is the component work order is completed and the component is not pushed at all fine for a push we have to explicitly push the two orders whereas here we manually pushed it so the toll is not showing over here the resource is always charged it is auto charge actually but for a push component auto auto. this completes the manufacturing collaboration <clears throat> How do you feel the demonstration? Anybody? Excellent, sir. You understood it? Especially on the yeah. uh, that part. Very good. So before I wind up, I will log in. Yeah. Tell uh, only one thing is, you know, most of the cases, what they do is that uh, the finished food, right? They do not bother sitting it back. So mm. we'll do logical reasoning. Into consign for it. What happens oh. is that you know, um, so there is a concept called as uh, landed cost. Uh -huh. So what happens is that I will supply all my components in order to make an engine or something. Uh -huh. so let's say Sri Lanka. Okay. Uh -huh. Now since I am manufacturing the end product in Sri Lanka, uh -huh. since the taxes are less, uh -huh. it will uh, it will it will make more sense. It will make the supply chain more effective. Is it more efficient? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, so I will maintain consignment, a consigned inventory on my place. That is uh -huh. a logical inventory. Okay. And what I'll do is that uh, if my inventory is uh, like uh, staying for a long time, right? I, I have to depreciate that uh -huh. in order to account for it. So uh -huh. there are a few, uh, uh, there are, there is a lot of uh, complexity there, which I face. We but can you all do everything in Fusion now for the entire process? Is it possible to do it? In yeah, you can do, but... <laughs> but but what is happening is that uh, we are doing it through adjustments. Either we are doing material adjustment or we are doing cost. Oh, 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 oh. So it is not automatic actually. Right? You have to only manually do the adjustments. All the cost adjustments, everything you are doing. Even the depreciation, you are doing it manually. Yeah. So only in EBS, they have come up with something known as outsourced manufacturing or partnership manufacturing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, if you go into inventory parameters, it is there now. Yeah, yeah. So, Here also so we have one contract some... manufacturing. Whether that will take care of all these things? Here I'm also we have one. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. Subu is but going to make a, is... a presentation on this one. Very soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That will be very nice. Mm -hmm. be... Learning so it. Those are very advanced topics, you know, mm -hmm. that they are considering now. Mm -hmm. um, especially for electronics uh, and few goods like automobiles and all this is mm -hmm. very important uh, so yeah sir Na nana sir excellent presentation so, excellent <laughs> thank, you. thank you so before i wind up i would like to say again one small marketing on this now fine i am selling my records at oraclenana.com and then you can watch everything and then you can even click on the pay button directly or otherwise you can go to the scm agenda on this now and then again, related it. And then here, in, the, in between, we have a click here for the agenda. If you click on it, the complete agenda for the 11 modules are there now. Right? Have a look at it. And then if it is satisfactory, you can buy it. And then uh, the biggest advantage is that what I will be helping you out, I'll mentoring you out. And then uh, my team will also help you out in solving the problem here. Right? So that is the biggest advantage of uh, what happens uh, learning from me, actually, when compared to other institutes. And then if you're happy, you can click on the pay button and then uh, fill up and then uh, your name, email, it is in phone numbers and go next and then make a payment. So through payment gateway, I will be getting a message and then I will not ship you. It is approximately 100 GB in size now, fine. So uh, you, I will now give you a week's time to basically download everything. So watch it and then uh, talk to me if you want. And then in the payment details button, whatever the amount given, the contact me in the payment details, and my contact details are also at the bottom actually. So you can even talk to me or write to me, whichever way you feel like, and then any clarifications. It will de definitely be a worthwhile investment for you. Good, then fine. So, any other questions? Who is this R? An R is there. Ra Raghu? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Are you yes. There? Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> you were there for the whole uh, session or otherwise you joined? No, no, no. Uh, you're there, no? Okay, good. Back. You liked it, the presentation? Yeah, I, I liked it. Excellent presentation. Thank you so much. So, any Le yeah. learning new new things from you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 
So bye for now, and then we'll not try to meet on that, some other session actually. Bye for now. Bye all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Nana. Thank you. Thank you, Nana. Thank you. Okay.